happy and welcome everyone who is in this platform today, honorable members, our department, our visitors, our staff of both offices. Uh, honorable members, we, here we are today. I'm suspecting each and every leader who is here um, and our staff, we, we do see and we do read in the papers, TVs, the sketch of gender based -based violence. Every day we got to get messages. This little girl, a 10 year old, missing that other one, raped and killed. That one still not there. And this violence, now it's, it's targeting uh, our children, uh, let alone the mothers. But it's worse now. Children are just taken from school, wherever. Uh, we are not aware what is going on. In our culture, when a boy taken to the mountain, uh, they do taught how to uh, handle the family, respect the mothers, your sisters. I'm, I'm not even mentioning the kids. Immediately that you are respecting your mother, your sisters, uh, it follows down that your kids. Uh, but as we are seeing every day, and even now, the Amahoshi, I'm suspecting, uh, they, they are just not knowing what went wrong. Irrespective of that, uh, honorable members, I'm, I'm welcoming you. Uh, it's disturbing what is going on. But let me uh, say that I'm aware that Netball South Africa is here and they will introduce themselves uh, and maybe during apologies they will tell who's not in and why. But with me, I'm having an apology from Honorable Adams. Uh, she's sick, but also she has got a bereavement. The cousin to, to Honorable uh, Adams was hijacked and was killed. We, you know, sometimes with, with some of us, you're even scared to tell members that you also have a bereavement, which we just get this weekend. Uh, so, uh, happy are those who, who rest in internal life. Some of us who are still behind in this world, we're experiencing horrible things. Sometime we'll just ask how many times, how often that you must pray that some horrible things must not happen. But what I do understand, even the evil people, they, they do pray that those things must be happen. By those words, I do welcome uh, the department the leadership of Netball South Africa and all of us. Can I give also Lega to give us apologies? Thank you, Madam Chair. We have an apology from Minister Mtetwa, who is in Botswana for a government business. We also have an apology from Deputy Minister Mafu, who is in East London. 
for the National Archives Awareness Week. And you've already mentioned Ms. Adams' apology. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, DJ, do we have apology from your office? Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members of the Department of Sport, uh, Arts and Culture Portfolio Committee. Um, I also greet um, the Chairperson uh, of the Board for Netball World Cup, Ms. Shikwambana. Uh, Chairperson, maybe I must just correct that, uh, yes, uh, Netball um, uh, President is here, uh, but she's here uh, on um, the basis of being a member of the board, uh, so is the CEO, uh, but they will introduce themselves. But as we are here, the Netball World Cup has got a duly properly constituted board, and they are the ones then who take responsibility for briefing on the state of readiness for the Netball World Cup. Um, and those are then all the members, including the Netball uh, 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 South Africa Netball uh, President, uh, and then as part of the Netball World Cup uh, Committee or Council. And um, may I then greet uh, the President of Netball also uh, in South Africa, as well as uh, all the colleagues of the board, and uh, also my colleagues. Uh, I missed Jefferson whether the apology of the minister was made because he is on official trip uh, in Botswana uh, as we speak uh, for this week. So she, he is uh, out of the country and that is why he is not here. Otherwise, um, uh, here at Chepesin, I have the two DDGs responsible for this uh, particular area of our mandate. And that is DDG Chikwatamba, uh, under whom international relations fall as well as DDG uh, Sumayakan, who is responsible for the issues related to sport uh, recreation development and sport promotion. And I would ask then at the time of introductions, Honorable Chairperson, that uh, my colleagues uh, introduce themselves so that uh, they can show their faces. And uh, then we will proceed at a time when the Honorable Chairperson orders to do the presentations. Uh, that is the only. Thank you, Tichi. Thank you, Tichi. Already, Solega did uh, give us the apology of the minister and deputy minister. Thank you, Tichi. Um, honorable members, I'm presenting the apologies in front of you. If you don't have any problem, let me get to the point number two. Um, point number two, according to agenda, uh, it's um, it's the the, the DG uh, who's leading the department as the agenda. It's in front of us. Uh, department of Sports Arts and Culture overview on the 2023 Netball World Cup to you, DJ. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes. The agenda has not been adopted yet, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, honorable members, thank you. So uh, I'm putting this agenda in front of you to adopt it. Honorable Chair, Honorable Zonda, move that we adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you, Honorable Sund. Any second? Thank you, um, Honorable Chair. Is yes. Honorable Malumana, I second yes. Honorable Zondi for moving with the proposed agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Malumana. The agenda has been adopted. I don't see anyone who's against that. Uh, now, let's give the department to do the political overview. It's not political, it's some sort of the overview on the presentation, which is going to come next after the teaching. 
Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I will just introduce the team. I've got Didi J. Khan. Uh, I hope that as I introduce them, they will just uh, flick their faces and then disappear. Um, Didi J. Khan, as well as Didi J. Chikwatamba. And then I've got the Chief Director, Simpiwe Mnobe. I've got the Chief of Staff, uh, Mr. J.P. Lowe. And then I've got um, the director, Sipesisha Mjali. I've got uh, the office of the deputy minister, Ms. Nambita Mekani. I've got um, then uh, the team of the department, the chief di acting chief director, international relations, uh, Mr. Michek Mbowani. I then have um, the colleagues, uh, Michelle Ravina, um, Tewatani. I also have um, in our midst, uh, um, Lodwick, who is sharing the presentation. Uh, I believe that uh, that is the delegation of the department that is present here today, Honorable Chairperson. We will uh, then um, uh, make the presentation, but just to remind Honorable Chairperson, as we talk about the World Cup and the fact that uh, what Matiba once said uh, about uh, South Africa being uh, able to return uh, to be among the nations of the world as being important after isolation and particularly during the era of also sport boycott as there was a lot of uh, solidarity with the plight of the majority of South Africans. But most importantly, then Madiba made the following statement in relation to the importance of sport. And uh, I quote directly that the sport has the power to change the world, it has the power to inspire, it has the power to unite in a way that little else does. It speaks to youth in a language they understand. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. It is more powerful than governments in breaking down racial barriers. It laughs in the face of all types of discrimination. I close quote. Chairperson, I'm raising this because the Netball World Cup will bring South Africans together, but more than that, will cross the barriers across the globe to bring all the humanity together in order to bring about harmony, social cohesion, as well as unity in the world, as we will have this spectacle that would be watched by the world over. So we present the overview in the context that this is not South Africa's Netball World Cup, but more of Africa's World Cup in Netball, the biggest women's sport in the world. None compares to it, except when compared with the World Cup in football on the men's section. It is very important that we present to you the state of readiness that our country has reached. We'll just remind the Honorable Chairperson that uh, the spheres of government, all of them, have been fully involved and are still participating since the bid process. The, also, the Portfolio Committee to just note that uh, then uh, the award in 2019 uh, resulted in the department then being able to have what we call a establishment of the board or the council. We can move to the next because I think this has been presented before in terms of the breakdown um, as Lord Week. So when we then look at the issue of then after being awarded this, there was a steering committee that was established uh, before we could establish the board itself. When then that happened, then there was a transition, Chairperson, in that then the World Cup uh, Committee was uh, fully established and appointed. Two, there was an interministerial committee that was also established. Now, the interim committee just uh, to rewind a bit so that everybody understands what we mean by the three spheres of government. 
is that this will be hosted in Cape Town in July next year. And that will be in the, in the province Western Cape. Therefore, then Western Cape um, Sport, Arts and Culture and Recreation, they are part and parcel of this team. But also we then have the, 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 the city of Cape Town. And then over and above the city of Cape Town, we then have national Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Those are the spheres we are referring to in this regard. We then had a cabinet a memorandum, which was tabled in March 2017, in 2021, where the interministerial committee was being requested, as well as the technical uh, committee that will support the IMC. Our national government and our cabinet then approved this and established the interministerial committee on the Netball World Cup. Also established then the technical uh, team or committee, technical IMC, constituted of directors general who are responsible for departments within which the IMC is constituted. Based on that, then uh, the following departments, honorable chairperson, were then uh, identified to be part of the IMC. These departments are sport, arts and culture, state security, home affairs, health, DERCO, trade, industry and competition, forestry, fisheries and environment, communications and digital technologies, the Department of Transport, and then the Presidency, the Police, Tourism, COCTA, Women, Youth, and People with Disability, as well as Western Cape um, uh, Department of Cultural Affairs and Sport, and the Mayor of the City of Cape Town. This team, this IMC, is then supported by the heads of departments as well as the directors general from the respective departments. We then, uh, Chairperson, developed the terms of reference, which then outlined the responsibilities for each and every department uh, so that they understand it. We then also then had the board established and introduced to the IMC as well as the technical IMC. The expectations then from the government was outlined on what each of them were expected to deliver. Then, of course, agreed on the feedback processes so that we monitor progress on commitments made by each of the departments. We then uh, wrote to these departments to say, can you then commit in writing that the, you will fulfill your obligations and this is uh, the status that we are presenting in the slide number seven, Chairperson, where we're indicating that uh, the most important thing was to honor the financial commitments to uh, International Netball Federation. And uh, we then had to do that and committed a total of 90 million rand uh, to support this particular hosting of this uh, biggest spectacle in women's sporting uh, area um, in the world. And the department then has been honoring payment of this uh, in tranches of 30 million rand per financially. But also then uh, Western Cape, um, and the department of the name cultural affairs and sport was also able to make commitments and those commitments are detailed there in terms of the legacy by upgrading and construction of netball courts and participation of local netball structures, as well providing assistance with the trophy tour. I will not go into detail, Chair, but just to indicate also support to the hosting of the welcome fan parks and viewing centers uh, when the netball cup uh, starts. Then we also had the city of Cape Town 
uh, where they also provided from the beginning the issue of the prepaid support, but also were able then to agree on the hosting commitments to host events prior to the Netball World Cup 2023, as well as a support in terms of the legacy projects, as well as financial support, all inherent responsibilities that the city has to do. We then have COCTA, which is then uh, to support the host city to deliver on its inherent responsibilities. And we've got that commitment uh, through that letter. And that uh, they will then uh, also provide support and build capacity of relevant municipalities so that they're able to perform their functions because the world needs to host the events in an area that is um, seen to be capable of uh, delivering, uh, whether it is infrastructure, uh, that there is no degradation, um, just whether the communities in that area are indeed under a well-capacitated and well-run municipality. Then, of course, the Department of Forestry, uh, Fisheries and Environment also had to commit, and which they did, to assist us in terms of uh, dealing with the estimations about carbon footprint calculations uh, so that we know whether pollu po pollution levels uh, are conducive uh, at a level where people are able to host such events come together without a risk of uh, pollution. Uh, um, that is um, a number of other commitments, Chairperson. Uh, I'm, then we also have commitments from DERCO uh, so we know that DERCO assists also with the issues of protocols, uh, particularly our international guests and visitors, heads of state who might be coming during the uh, World Cup uh, tournament. We also have uh, the same communication commitments from the department, uh, DCDT, as we had indicated, um, that they will ensure that uh, we have relevant technology uh, within the Cape Town International Convention Center to ensure that the tournament is run smoothly. Transport um, cannot at this stage commit uh, to what was directly requested, but had advised them to indicate the support they believe they can provide, but they had responded in acknowledging the request we have made. Uh, DTIC, and then in terms of uh, clothing and textile desk, uh, providing the issues about the IP intellectual property legislative requirements. GCIS also committed in terms of supporting in the communication and promotion and marketing of the Netball World Cup as they work together with the department's communication team. Tourism, in terms of awareness, story of travel and tourism packages and deals, uh, working closely with the hospitality industry to assist us to make sure that uh, all issues related to accommodation, but also sport tourism is promoted. And uh, they have provided us detail in this regard. Jefferson, if we then look at the Department of Women, Youth and People with Disabilities, and then uh, they will be just providing and raising awareness in relation to the needs of um, women they must, and youth and persons with disabilities, mobilizing them and making sure that they are not on the periphery of the World Cup. They remain our conscience in making sure that uh, these groups that have been uh, marginalized and regarded as vulnerable are not left watching uh, from the perimeter, but are part and parcel of the Netball World Cup 2023. And then of course, subs is given. The issue is you cannot have an event that is marred by risks of a um, crime. And that is why then they've agreed that they will be playing a crucial role, including the issue of the net joints being established, the events and safety and security planning committees that they will assist us on. State security, of course, the issues of threat analysis and risks that uh, the country can face, those assessments that will assist us in this regard. Chairperson, the legacy program uh, that relates to the domestic, uh, I think the, the, there will be an explanation in detail by the board, but we just want to indicate that uh, this is one of the key things. What is the leave behind? What will change 
so that more and more of our girl children and by the way boys now who also play netball they have something that will remain as a legacy of netball world cup and we are giving them a breakdown in terms of where we are in terms of the two courts per province uh, which one will be a multi-coded one and one that only dedicated to netball and we then break that uh, break down in terms of where in which schools uh, because the target is if we are able to do this in schools we will be able then to have a, le a living legacy and a lasting legacy so if you look at that each province helping us to provide this uh, particular legacy uh, to be provided with this legacy uh, projects uh, Guazulu and Natal, we give the name of the school, which is Lutai High School. Then if you look at um, Hammersdale, and that you be at Tegwini Metropolitan, Limpopo, Chikutula Secondary School, Mukondelili um, Village, um, what will be at uh, Makaro, and then of course, other in Cape and uh, Northwest. We have tried to cover almost all provinces. I may not go into the details, Honorable Chairperson, um, but this is what the team has really been able to do so make sure that each province has got at least two legacy uh, uh, projects uh, in terms of sport courts where children can be provided with infrastructure which is then used not only by the schools but by a circle of schools within a particular area so that this is shared uh, by the different schools uh, in that area to support the growth and development of netball. Of course, then, Chairperson, if we then move at the, the just to share with you some of the key um, projects, you will see that, that we are indicating just how will this look like, depicting them in terms of pictures. Uh, and I think uh, my uh, screen sharer is really sleeping. Uh, uh, that side. Uh, Ludwig, can you move with me or is it uh, my you left with three system? minutes? You left with three minutes, did you? Well, Chairperson, I am done. I was just indicating the only was those are just pictures uh, to indicate. But in terms of the resolutions, if we go to the last slide, uh, page 15, um, just to indicate that uh, the IMC, uh, which met for the first time, uh, committed then that uh, they will firstly ensure that parliament is included in the beta process, that uh, they will also be able to seek a valuable counsel or insights from the team that was involved in the 2021 FIFA World Cup, but also to look at the lead sponsor uh, for the North Pole World Cup, uh, but also come up with 10 line or slogans to create a nationwide movement. For instance, if it is here, it is here. This is meant to ensure that uh, there is an international buy-in of this particular support um, for the Netball World Cup. Then they will support Netball uh, Fridays uh, to create a greater awareness and uh, make sure that the South Africans own this particular project, uh, which is the biggest project we can ever have uh, in the country. Uh, talking to the majority of citizens in this country, which is women. Chairperson, uh, allow me then to just uh, thank you. And um, that is the overview that we have in relation to the state of readiness for the World Cup, uh, Netball World Cup uh, 2023. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tichi. Uh, I like your closing remarks when you're saying that it's the biggest event of the World Cup uh, coming South Africa and the World Cup of the, the majority of the population of this country, which are women. I think you to recognize that. Um, let me take this opportunity uh, to give to the leader of World Cup a board member i'm suspecting i'm very sorry patience for what in your sending to call you by your first second name uh, 
I'm, I'm giving you this opportunity to talk to us. I thank you. Uh, um, th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I just thought, let me just show my face. Uh, yes, we've uh, seen you. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, a good morning again to the Honorable Chair. Um, and also to good morning to members of the Portfolio Committee on Sport, Arts and Culture. Um, and may I also say greetings to uh, the DG and his team. Good morning as well to the board members um, and uh, the executive of NSA that it's part of the session. Um, I, I was unable to give apologies uh, uh, to Honorable Chair uh, at that point, but uh, please kindly allow us to um, just give an apology in terms of the board. Uh, people that are here, it's, it's myself as a chair. Uh, I'm also joined by a DDG Khan as well as our board member. And then we also have Blanche Delage, uh, who's the CEO of Netball South Africa, but she's our board member. And also joined by Lyndon Bauer from uh, the Western Cape. Uh, may, I, may I convey our sincere apologies to uh, for the president of Netball South Africa, Cecilia, who couldn't join us. Um, and also uh, JP Smith. So those are the two apologies that we have from the, from the board. But I think the, they've got confidence that as a board we'll be able to give a, an update to, to, to your meeting, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, maybe before I, uh, I also continue, I don't know, um, Blanche, Blanche, in terms of the NSA executive. Person? Yes. Sorry, sorry, Chairperson of the Netball uh, board member. Yes, Honorable Shuk. Apology to disturb the speaker chair. When I'm concerned with the number of board members who are there. Only two members who are there. Obviously, one of our official is there. I think I'm concerned. It's a standing meeting, and there must be spectators. They cannot just come up to say there's an apology. What is the reason of the apology? It's a standing meeting. We invited them a long time ago. I'm concerned, chair. Do you note my objection to that? Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Shong. You, you hear yourself or the person yes, yes. that you must not note it. Yes. No, no, it's, it's four board members that are here, and I have taken note of the honorable member in terms of the other two board members that are not here. So we are six, uh, four are in attendance. It's only two that are not here, which is the, uh, um, which is Mrs. Mulukwane and also JP Smith. <clears throat> thank, you. Um, th thank you very much. And then I think from, from Netball, uh, uh, Blanche, as the CEO, uh, can you just quickly indicate uh, who is in attendance from the executive? Honourable Chairperson, Madam Beauty, um, one of our directors um, received the news of a family member that passed on last night and she left to go and attend the family. Apologies for her. Okay. Thank you. Um, Madam CEO, uh, honorable members, uh, the wife of the Mami Diala is in attendance, and we also have uh, Claudine Klassen, who is the di director of the Marcation and Structure in this meeting. Who's speaking? Thank you very much, NSA. Who, I think I just who, wanted to. Who's speaking? It's the, it's the deputy president of Netball South Africa. Uh, just now. Okay. Where's his hair face? Dorisan. <laughs> Dorisan. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. I'm trying, I'm, not... trying to, I'm trying to show my face. I don't see it. Yes. We do see the light. No, no. At the does it show? No, not at all. For Try my again, I've, I've, I've tried. Uh, video. There you are. Yes. Thank you. Vividly. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Uh, I, the, the condolences to the member who's just got a bereavement. Thank you. Pass our condolences. Okay. The thing, thank okay, you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Chair. Um, <clears throat> right, in terms of our, our presentation, we've just put together a presentation to give an update. Um, and Honorable Chair, um, let me first indicate that as a board, uh, we've got a, a clear vision in terms of what is expected of us to do. And from our side, our vision is very clear that we need to host a unique, successful World Cup in order, to, in order to raise the profile of netball in South Africa and to transform the sport into a fully professional career for women, because this is the first of its kind in Africa and in South Africa. Um, next slide area. Um, may I also uh, indicate, uh, because I, I've not said uh, who we've got from our local organizing committee, uh, we also joined, uh, my apologies to my colleagues, uh, we've also joined by our newly appointed tournament director, uh, Ms. Priscilla Masisi. And then we've, got, we've also, we're also joined by the head of finance administration, which is Gerardi Orendal. And we also have got Riabetsu Mpete, who's our project manager. So that's the whole team that is in, in attendance, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, th this is our roadmap um, in terms of how we're going to get into the opening ceremony next year on the 28th of July in, in, in Cape Town. I'll talk to the, the, the roadmap uh, as we go uh, on with the presentation. Next slide, please. In terms of the event next year, uh, we're looking at uh, setting up the venue on the 1st of July uh, up to the 25th. Um, and then um, World Netball Board is going to be hosting its meeting on the 25th of July, 2023. And we are also uh, going to have a team welcome dinner that is also planned for the 25th of uh, July, 2023. Um, and you'll note that there we, we, we have proposed that um, we'll request our honorable uh, minister to host this event. Uh, if not, uh, maybe even request uh, the president's office to give us that kind of an honor to host uh, that dinner. And then also uh, during the period of, uh, before the, the event start, there'll also be a World Netball Congress. This is the norm, it's what they do whenever they've got a World Cup in, in whatever country where it's hosted. So the World, World Netball Congress will be on the 26th to the 27th of July. And then also <clears throat> the Congress delegate and observer welcome reception. Uh, this one we're proposing to, to be hosted by our, um, Mayor of City of Cape Town, which will be on the 26th of July. And then also going to have an event called Candle Lighting Ceremony. And this one we we, we felt that since it's 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 candle lighting and obviously we're looking at even having it at the table mountain. And in this one we're proposing that the MEC of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture and the Western Cape or the Premier should be the, the people that should give us the honor to host it on the 27th of July. Opening ceremony and our first match is going to be on the 28th of July, 2023. The competition time, uh, it's 28 July up to the 6th of August. I think you'll take- Just a moment, patients. Uh, Zolega ask this question in this platform. Is asking something, please ask in order that they must correct and answer. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just need to confirm if Mr. Oldendal is using Tech One's iPhone. Can you just please confirm that, Mr. Orlandan? If not, can the person who's using Tech One's iPhone please confirm who they are? Thank you, Madam Chair. Until we get that information, please wait, uh, patience. Who's using that? Uh, we, we are going to take take that person out if he does yeah. not or she doesn't. Hello. Uh, apologies. It's um, uh, Ravina Lawrence from Sport Arts. Okay. Uh, you know that person, uh, DJ. Yes, Chairperson, I had introduced her. I don't know how she, she used a different uh, tech name. 
Uh, just Why she's please, doing can that? we just write our name? And she's I'll taking correct so that long. Today. I'll correct that now. But you're taking so long even to to respond. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, okay, patience. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I was on the competition time. It's going to be the 28th of July up to the 6th of August. Um, I think, Honorable Chair, we need to note that um, the, the event is going to start in the Mandela's month and also end in the Women's Month. Uh, you know, uh, the, the DG started very well about the quote from our icon, and that's mm -hmm. why we're going to host it in that, in that month, and then it's going to end in the Women's Month. And then we're going to have an observers program, which is going to be from the 2nd to the 3rd of August. And then the closing ceremony in the finals, is going to be on the 6th of August, 2023. And obviously we're going to do the venue strike down from the 6th of August up to the 9th, 2023. In terms of progress thus far, um, against the, the, the milestones that have been sent, uh, that has been set, um, the minister have announced the board in April uh, 2021. And then we, we then avail, av unveiled the World Cup logo in June 2021 in Cape Town. And then also uh, we've developed um, key policies for, 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 the, for, for the World Cup. I think this was a critical point for us as a board because our responsibility as a board is development of policies and provide strategic direction to the LOC. And that this was very important for us to really make sure that we've got clear policies and system that is going to guide our team that is going to implement um, the, the project. And then we've also opened offices uh, or headquarters um, in September 2021. And we've also uh, put the tender on the manufacturing of the wooden sprung floors. And I think I'm going to talk to this uh, when we come to the legacy as well. And then the recruitment policy, uh, recruitment process in relation to the LOC, we've also commenced with that last day in September. A part of our responsibility as a board as well uh, is to report to uh, the World Cup, uh, the World Netball uh, Board. Um, and in terms of last year, uh, we, we reported to them about the event planning update, and we've also submitted a events transport plan. And I think in this instance, it was more sharing with them in terms of, of how we're going to take care of them as they arrive in the country mm -hmm. from the airport up to, to, to their hotel, various hotels. Um, we also uh, submitted accommodation options uh, and the plan for, for them as well, Netball Board. Uh, there's a number of hotels that we've identified, uh, mainly around uh, the precinct. Um, and I think uh, I mean, that, that we can share if the board, if the Honorable um, <coughs> Portfolio Committee need to know that, but we're using most of the Togosan uh, hotels. And then we've also shared with them the event website and event promotional campaign that we have established, which was last day in June, July 2021. Um, we've also submitted to, to them our PR plan on domestic and international uh, to net well, to World Netball. Uh, this is more the visual language and our a brand CI guide in terms of uh, what we're going to be doing. I mean, one of the things is that uh, in, the sun shines in, in, in Africa, uh, and we're definitely going to make sure that as they come through, they are going to really have a great experience and enjoy being part of uh, this continent and the country. And we've also submitted our risk assessment and contingency plan. I think this one, we do it each and every quarter so that they are aware in terms of how we're progressing around some of the issues that I have a concern from their side. On appointment of host broadcasters, um, we've concluded on that one. Uh, we had a press conference on the 2nd of March, 2022, to announce our host broadcasters. Also, uh, we've managed to appoint our commercial partner. Uh, this is it's, it's a company that is going to go out and and raise funding for, for, for the event, adding into what, uh, what we've received from government. We also based on event ticketing strategy uh, that is going to include allocation of complementary and VIP tickets. Uh, a high level strategy has been developed in this regard. Uh, and obviously uh, once we've concluded, because since we've appointed our tournament director, she's really working very hard and uh, there's more momentum in terms of what we're doing from our side. And in terms of submission of risk assessment and 
contingency plan. I've spoken about that one that we're busy uh, submitting quarterly reports in that regard. In terms of achievement for, for this year, um, we had an opportunity to be visited by the CEO of World Netball, Ms. Claire Brigal, and, and, and she had an opportunity, you know, to even go and visit some of the legacy uh, project in the Western Cape. Um, and also uh, we've appointed in February our finance and administration uh, head, which is Gerard Odendal. And, and, and I think I've spoken about the one of uh, us appointing our domestic commercial agent in February. In March, we've, we've announced uh, the host, the host broadcasters, and we've also uh, appointed our tournament director, Ms. Priscilla Masisi, who, who started uh, on the 1st of May, 2022. And then in terms of uh, April, uh, as a board, we, we hosted a strategic planning session. And in that period, when we are hosting that, we are fortunate that we could be joined by Ms. Um, Kate Agnew from World Netball, who is an, event, who is an events consultant. Uh, one of the things, Honorable Chair, that I must indicate is that uh, custodianship of the event, we all fear that it belongs to World Netball. And from their side, uh, and in terms of the agreement with World Netball, was that they will uh, appoint an event consultant who's going to work with us to ensure that we are on track in terms of preparation and we're meeting our obligations as what has been agreed even in the host agreement. And Kate, in her uh, presence in the country, she joined us in that strategic planning session so that she can share with us in terms of the expectations as well, but also provide guidance because um, she's a guru in this kind of work. Uh, she's been doing it for quite some time. She's from New Zealand. So, so she also had an opportunity to visit uh, some of the uh, accommodation areas that we've uh, identified. And she also even had an opportunity to engage with SuperSport around uh, the broadcasting needs. May have already said that uh, we've appointed uh, Priscilla. Uh, currently, we, we're finalizing um, the head of marketing. Actually, it has been com uh, completed. The interviews have been done in May. Uh, the board is meeting on Thursday, and we're going to be looking at the recommendation that has been forwarded to us by the panel. Event details, I've spoken to that one. In terms of governance, um, hosting agreement has been signed and confirmed. Uh, um, the issue of the appointment of the board, uh, even the DG has spoken about that, and it has been confirmed. Recruitment, recruitment process is an ongoing process from our side. And a member must also in, indicate, uh, honorable chair, that we're also going to also be looking at an aspect of seconding, seconding some of uh, staff members from our partners or stakeholders that we have within the World Cup. And then in terms of the commercial, I've already indicated that um, we, we've hosted that uh, and, and our commercial partners, it's Supersport, SABC, and Telcom One. Marketing and communication, uh, go back area, thank you. Marketing and communication, brand guidelines confirmed, uh, tender for ticketing company to be published soon. And then I've, I've spoken about one of the marketing uh, interviews on the head of marketing. In terms of tournament operations, the format for the World Cup has been confirmed. I think this one is more technical and we are guided mainly by um, World Netball. Competition scheduled in second phase of development. And then accommodation recommendations have been sent to World Netball for their input and finalization. Venue operations confirmed. Uh, with, um, the venue has been confirmed. Deposit has been paid uh, and also we're busy on finalizing the contract with the Cape Town International Convention Center. In terms of activations, um, thank you to Netball South Africa who launched a, a Netball Friday on the 4th of February. Um, and there's a t-shirt that it's, it's, it's been even sold to anyone that wants to join and be part of mobilizing on this event. Uh, we, 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 we also announced the mascot competition in Feb, uh, the same day when um, the Netball Friday was launched. And I must indicate that uh, the closing date was on 31st of March, 2022. Um, already uh, there's a committee that was put together to look at the proposal that we've received. And we intend as a board to announce the mascot uh, when we, we, we do our one year before the opening ceremony of 
the World Cup next year, which is on the 28th of July, 2022. We've also celebrated our 500 days um, on the 14th of March. This was more of a digital event. Uh, in terms of resources, in terms of human resources, uh, we're working hard that at least by end of June, we should have had more people appointed within the LOC so that we can be able to chase most of the things that needs to be done uh, on the event. I've already touched base about the issue of the one year celebration before the opening ceremony next year. Our idea on this one, Honorable Chair, is that we're looking at um, having fiscal digital clocks in the shape of uh, Africa, which are going to be placed in a major airports in the country. Uh, we're also looking at other areas within um, uh, Cape Town, and that's why we've got even VN waterfront. One of the things that we're even saying that we also need to put one at, at ICC, and also are going to have one at the Netball South Africa head office. Um, I must also indicate that the, the day that we're celebrating the one year to go celebration, it's also going to be the opening ceremony of the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. Uh, and I think the honorable chair and, and members must take note that Netball is part of uh, the, Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Games and also we'll be having our projects being part of Team South Africa in this regard. Uh, Africa Regional Qualifiers um, is going to take place on the 20th to the 27th of August. This is going to be happening here in, 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 Pretor in Pretoria. In October, we're looking at the first phase of ticket sales. Uh, and then um, I must say that all the regions, they'll also be hosting, I think I'll talk about it later, they'll also be hosting their own regional qualifiers. But uh, in, on the 30th of November, we'll then be having a final draw of all the teams that are going to be coming to South Africa next year. And the second phase of ticketing is going to happen on the 7th of December, 2022. 200 days to go, it's, uh, it's going to be on the 10th of January, 2023. And on this one, we're looking at hosting coaching clinics and obvious um, uh, I must commend uh, our provincial department and the MECs. They've also been on board uh, on, on supporting this project and also we'll be having some tournaments that are going to be hosted by them in those nine provinces. And then 100 days to go is going to on the 20th of uh, April. And on this one, we're looking at a physical mobilization and digital campaign and an announcement of the uh, trophy tour that is going to be coming uh, to the country and also the third phase of ticket sales, uh, it's going to be happening on the 20th of April. And then arrival of the trophy and official game ball, this is going to be happening on the 25th. And I think all of us, we know that the 25th, it's Africa day. This will be a significant moment for the continent um, and for us as a country when it arrives. The trophy will land either in Johannesburg or in KwaZulu Natal. And obviously what we're looking at is to ensure that this trophy visit all uh, the, the, the provinces, uh, because as much as it's in the Western Cape, uh, the event, but this is a country's event. 50 days to go, it's, it's going to be the trophy tour, which is going to start on the 9th of, 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 of June. And then the trophy, once it is done, the eight provinces is then going to arrive in the city of Cape Town on the 12th uh, of July. And then the games then, and then the viewing parks uh, and the uh, centers are then going to be open from the 28th of July to the 6th of August. This is just to indicate a, a honorable chair in terms of how the trophy is going to be traveling around the country. I'm not going to labor on that one. And obviously in terms of the fan parks, we've just uh, uh, put some kind of requirements on, on if uh, that whoever was going to even look at having it is that we need to ensure that the fan parks, uh, it's, fa it's family friendly. There's large viewing screen. The whole issue of hospitality is taken care of. And then the space for sponsors activation uh, and also the space for merchandising sales and also the space for, for public catering. Oh. Right, in terms of legacy problem, the DJ has already spoken about it, but I think I'm just going to also talk to it. Um, in terms of domestic part of it, um, Yes, the Western Cape Department is really uh, taking a lead in terms of ensuring that we get between the 20 and 30 courts. And I think they've done very well. And as I said earlier on that, the CEO of World Netball was very impressed when he visited some of the facilities that have been upgraded and, and, built, and built. 
And then also uh, the DG has spoken about the multi-purpose uh, sport courts that are going to be managed or coming from the National Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. And on obvious, uh, each province in terms of our domestic legacy uh, is going to be receiving wooden sprung floor and Netball South Africa will also be re receiving two of those uh, wooden sprung floors as part of um, legacy. I think on this one, it's critical uh, because some of us have not had, had, had an opportunity, you know, when we, we played our netball to be playing at the correct faci um, uh, facility, including the, the correct floors. And I think this is a great a, a, a legacy that we're going to be leaving behind. And then also uh, Netball South Africa is actually helping on this part in terms of capacity, capacity building of coaches, empires and administrators in the province uh, uh, within their members as NSA. Internationally, we, we, we're going to be uh, giving two of those wooden floors to Africa. And I think, uh, um, I, I hope that the members are aware that our president of Netball South, South Africa, she's also the president of Netball, Afri uh, Netball Africa. And also a knowledge transfer program will be facilitated to upskill for uh, African countries on technical aspect of the game. And also the knowledge transfer program will also be facilitated to the United States of South, or the United States of uh, the USA, let me just put it that way. Um, they have been selected to grow the game of netball in America. I think we all know that America, you talk basketball and all those kind of things, and netball has not been in that particular level. So they've also been identi identified. Next slide. In terms of budget, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, our total budget in terms of this whole event, we're looking at about 177 million. Um, and thank you very much to our government uh, that have made commitment. So part of our revenue, we're going to be getting it from, from the depart from government and already the National Department of Sports Arts and Culture uh, has allocated 90 million. Our provincial department uh, in the Western Cape has allocated 5 million. And then from the city, we're going to get 6 million. Uh, we're also going to use, um, we're also going to get other revenue through a commercial and obviously through sponsorship, we need to raise about 15 million. Uh, the broadcasting, I think as we've announced, that basically what we've got 9.5 million. Through the merchandising and licensing, we're looking at um, getting a, rev a revenue of 2.5 million. And then in terms of ticket sales, we're very hopeful that we're going to raise about 20, uh, 12 million. And obviously through the accommodation that we have, we're looking at having accommodation rebate of about half a million. And then in terms of expenditure, that's what we, we envisage to use the money for. Next slide, Ria. But in terms of the project plan for, 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 for this year, um, I've spoken already about April, May, uh, in terms of what we, we, we we're busy doing. Um, in terms of June, uh, there's going to be training for state scale software uh, for, for the members that are going to help out on the technical aspect. Head of departments, we're hoping that head of departments are all going to be appointed this month. Um, and also marketing the plan for regional qualifiers, uh, which we're going to share with the regions and also World Network. In terms of July, that same training is going to continue. We're going to celebrate our one year to go campaign. Uh, Oceana is going to also host its regional qualifiers in July. And then the registration of travel packages is what we're looking at as well in, in July. And lastly, as I said earlier on that, we're going to be launching our mascot in July, 2022. In terms of uh, August, it's announcement of the top six ranked countries. Um, I think those are the countries that are also going to be in the Commonwealth Games. And then, as I said earlier, that Africa Regional Qualifiers is going to be happening in, in August. Then September, Asia is hosting its regional qualifier. And also from our side, it will be submission of final venue layout, security plan for the teams, spectators, uh, the application system and transport system. And in October, it will be um, Europe and America's regional qualifiers. And then a uh, World Cup, uh, and then we're also going to do a, a World Cup event manual shared with competition teams. teams. And also, as I said earlier, that, uh, that's where we'll uh, have our first phase of ticket sales going live. And the final draw is going to be in, in, in November. Oh yes, we, we, we cannot say to ourselves we will be ready to host the event next day without even having 
uh, test events. So, so the first test event is the one that we're going to have here in Pretoria. And then we're also planning to have uh, another one uh, in November, which is going to be the Diamond Challenge. And then next year, January 2023, we're going to be hosting a quad series in Cape Town as part of us preparing and checking that are all systems ready for us to be able to host the event in July uh, 2023. And before I close, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, I want to leave you with this quote. You know, after we we were um, appointed as members of the of the board to 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 become uh, to to be given the responsibility as of steward, stewardship on this project. Uh, one of the things that uh, keeps me going as the chair, uh, it's this quote from Stephen R. Covey, uh, open quote, he says, the first job of a leader, whether at work or at home, is to inspire trust, is to bring out the best in people by entrusting them with the meaningful stewardship and to create an environment in which high trust interaction inspires creativity and possibilities. And these are things that we, as the board of this World Cup, we need to aspire to, to make sure that come next year, all of us are going to be proud to be hosting the best world ever World Cup of netball in this country. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Wise words, thank you so much. These are wise words. Um, thank you so much, uh, Patience. Um, now, honorable members, uh, is now the time uh, to interact with the presentations, with the presentations. Uh, let me go. Oh, I have a hand, honorable Song. Honorable Veronica, Honorable Sond, Honorable Sibia, Honorable Maloman, in that order. I thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, I welcome the presentation and thank you for the detailed presentation. But Chair, my first question is, I'm worried why the CA is not here of Network of South Africa. Maybe the question is, what relationship does the board has with the CEO of South Africa? How often do you meet? And what is the relationship? I think be honest to us, because last time we saw that we expected you to join our meeting as a board, but we're told that no, it's a, it's a gap on its own, then we're not aware because we wanted to discuss well cut. But nonetheless, Chair, another question is who appoints officials who appoints, for example, project managers and others who appoints them? Is it the board? Is it the CEO? Can I get them an explanation? And what does what is the role and the duties of the head of marketing and the tournament director? I need to understand that. The duties and the roles of tournament director and the head of marketing. I think I'm, I'm on HR issues because the presentation is not detailing exactly the HR issues. Issues of secondment. You spoke of that you are going to second people from different stakeholders. Tell us more about secondment. Are they going to get paid double? What is the remuneration? What is the secondment all about? Can we get the details on the recruitment processes? And can you give us a structure, the detailed official uh, human capacity that you need. I think you must get a structure because you spoke of the latest actors who have all this appointment and all this equipment. For what? For what positions? And the question is on legacy program. Where I see that uh, there's a, a primary school called Matala. Where is Matala in Fautin for the, the multiple center? I want to see and check for myself. And in the issues of, I think it's one of the core issues that I wanted to find out. What strategy do you have to make sure that we have supporters or we have fans on these events or on these uh, venues? What strategy do you have to make sure that we have uh, more supporters or more fans 
should so to say because your your function your presentation is quiet on that and then on the allocation of budget to date you've received how much from the department you spoke of 90 million and what does it entail that 90 million and i think in future we must get a good financial standing of i saw everything but I think it's for me as a layman, I must understand it because I see expenditure. All in all, is this tournament going to be work on a profit or on a loss? I'm not sure. But because all things are packed differently in different forms. But nonetheless, I welcome the presentation. Last of all, the test event, where in Pitonga the venue? You said the test event will be in Pitonga, where in Pitonga? So now, Chair, I think we'll have second bite. Let me leave for my colleagues. Uh, thank you, Honorable Msongo. Honorable Veronica. Thank you, Chairperson. I also welcome the presentation. Um, I also have a few questions, and there's some of your questions. Sorry, Chairperson, there's um, someone is receiving. Yes, uh, who's, who's not using the, the mic? Uh, Thank you, Honorable Veronica. Honorable members, okay. please don't open your mics. Chairperson, in the first place, I also want to ask um, the composition of the board of the Netball 2023 World Cup. It is mainly composed of senior departmental officials, members of Netball SA and a representative from SASCO. Why are there no representatives from the civil society as well as independent members um, that are not from government entities. Um, according to the plan that was previously presented to us, there should be a CEO, uh, an administrative accounting officer. Um, why is that person not reflected nowhere? Has that person been appointed? If not, why not? Um, with regards to this um, board, I want to know, um, do the board um, meet with a um, national, uh, Netball SA executives and how regular if you do, um, if we can get, maybe get dates on that. And, and then um, I also want to know when will the first um, set of audited financial statements be made available to the committee? Um, the profits that will be made uh, in this World Cup, how much will go to World Netball and how much will remain in South Africa? Um, on um, slide 13, I see that uh, you're doing a provincial tournament in January. Um, I want to ask why, when at the moment there's a provincial tournament that is currently running, as we speak, uh, which is fully sponsored by Tuaza. Um, on um, the same slide, you refer to Africa Day, 25 May. Um, uh, Netball SA was uh, awarded a, a bit, not um, Africa Netball. So can you just give me, um, reflect on that and how much money is African Netball contributing to the World Cup? Um, then I also want to ask um, if, if, we, if there's paperwork of the budgets, if you look at slide 14, when we look at that, uh, that you presented there, business operations 11.19, uh, like the legacy costs, can you maybe in terms of that elaborate or is it possible that on those um, figures that you give there, that you can maybe give us more information on that, um, that you can send to us, because you mentioned a bid fee of 183,000, but in the meantime, government has almost paid 4 million rand uh, uh, in the beginning for the bid. So what is the difference between the bid fee and the sanction fee? Uh, we need you to explain to us the uh, figures that you're presenting to us. There's no um, proper um, breakdown of what you're presenting to us. We also need to know uh, the board salaries, uh, who is getting paid what. Um, I want to know if this, the, the members that are now also sitting on the uh, World Cup board, will they be double dipping? Um, because at this stage, they're already receiving a, 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 a quite a, a huge salary from Netball SA. So um, just if you can uh, give us um, clarity on that. Then um, previously it was mentioned that uh, there was 55 or 54 million paid from uh, super sport. This is not reflecting on this presentation. Where is that money? And where does the, um, the uh, 
yeah, I, I just want to know where is why is it not reflecting? Has it actually been given to Netball SA? Another thing that um, with regards to the ticket sales, um, well, where is that money going? Um, in the past, has that money been reflecting on the bank statement of uh, Netball SA? And if not, can you maybe tell us what happens with the uh, proceeds? Where does it go? I'll um, take a second by chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Veronica. Honorable Zondi. Person, thank you very much and good morning to honorable members and our visitors. Um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll take five as you indicated so that I'll save time for other uh, members to take a second bite. The first one, uh, Chair, Honorable Mshongo uh, covered a bit. Uh, it is directed to UTG Ukawazela on the 90 million allocation um, uh, from DSEC. Uh, I want to know when is the allocation uh, made available uh, to the committee, the uh, World Cup committee? Is it in the current financial year or in the, in the next financial year? The second one, Chair, uh, is that how many courts, how many Nepal courts does the tournament use? The, the presentation uh, indicated that six of six courts has been handed, handed over to the World Cup uh, a, a committee, but I want to know how many of them in total that are, 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 are going to be used uh, in, the, in, in the tournament. It is hard to share how many international tourists are estimated to be part of the Netball World Cup 2023. Has the World Cup steering committees been formed? If not, when are we expecting them? The last one, Chair. What is the status of the World Cup legacy projects to date? How will the legacy project ensure that the netball is enjoyed throughout the country, even after the World Cup 2023? Thank you very much. Chair. Thank you, Honorable Zondi. Honorable Sibia. Thank you, Chairperson. Greetings to everyone. Uh, Chairperson, thanks for your presentation. <laughs> Firstly, Lendo Yogut Chairperson, she raised a point of order and a point of corrections while the presenter is on the platform. Yes, the step. Because I am a board members, out of six, they were four. So they are not all there. Uh, uh, I ain't, 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 not to see point of order, point of correction, because an and Pelel, who honorable Mshong Wakosha apologized at last meeting. There is no harm. As long as CC Megasi Buzu would open similarly as a aboy, see a bonga person. My first question What is the estimated return on in point of order chair? Point of order chair. Point of order chair. Oh, 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 awesome. Honorable members, uh, can can other things uh, point of order, chair? Wait for <laughs> our own time. Yes, honorable. Oh, so yes, chairperson. Uh, what must I apologize for? Uh, I want that to be sustained. I must apologize for something that I'm not aware of. And I have a right to ask if people did not apologize to stop someone who's presenting because we did not get the apologies. I have a right. This is a free country. I can say anything when I like, when I want to, as long as it makes sense to me. Thank you. Honorable members, you know, sometimes uh, this um, problem of honorable members in this committee of every now and then, uh, you need to take each other up 
sometimes if you can just let things go and in a relevant time, correcting each other. To me, it's, it's, it's not showing us in leadership. I, I do feel, honorable members, that sometimes uh, if we cannot uh, do this, it can help us. Uh, there was a quote here, which was quoted by all patients. I've taken both of you, your concerns, which you raised. Uh, sometimes these things they do want a uh, that we must try to avoid. Sometimes the chairperson, even if I've seen that this thing or that thing uh, is not going to assist us, I'll just keep quiet. Uh, sometimes it can assist. Thank you, honorable members. I've noted your comments, both of you. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, honorable uh, Sibia was starting to ask questions. Uh, that's what these things are, uh, are not healthy. Uh, have you asked your questions, Honorable Member? Chairperson? Not, not yet, Chairperson. Chairperson, point of personal explanation. Honorable Shongo, it will assist you not to not to just call me. Uh, I, was, I was just trying not to get into what is just happening. Uh, if, if we can handle this thing uh, in, a, in a manner that uh, it will assist us all. For some of us now, I'm just not even knowing what is going on. And now you you say now chairperson chairperson. I don't I'm know. on the platform. Is me on the board? platform, chairperson? No, I'm still on the platform. I'm still addressing what is going on in this meeting. Honorable Mshlong, you called me while some was still talking. Yeah, I wanted you to rule that. Uh, the members here said I must apologize on what? I did not apologize on what? And I want to rule that, am I wrong to call point of order while someone is speaking? Because for an example, when the presenter spoke, I've said uh, point of order, why members of the board are not available. Am I wrong? I think you must rule on that. Thank you. You even want me now to, that I must share according, according to you. Because I was saying that I want to avoid what we are doing. Because these uh, members, uh, you know, Honorable Mshong, we have said uh, they must not disrespect us. Where are other members? As if the half of the board members were not here. And they, they've explained that there are six. And if we did read uh, their presentation, it was indicated that there are six. So two members uh, were not here. And, and if maybe your question was that, uh, why are we not having apologies? But not saying you don't respect us, where are other members? As if it was half of that. I was just keeping quiet because uh, at least we have raised that and they've explained. But I am not sure now what must I rule. Uh, sometimes honorable members on the platform uh, being leaders, you, you can get in and try to, to talk to each other. Uh, sometimes I just feel that uh, sometimes there is a deliberate of disruption in this committee. Uh, and I do want that everyone must express herself or himself, but just in between, uh, we're having visitors, they are listening to us now, uh, not doing what they've come to do. 
uh, I'm pleading the honorable members, maybe um, let's address these questions that uh, sometimes we are just doing in front of our visitors. Um, I'm not going to rule uh, to anything. I'm, I'm, I'm pleading that may we together correct whatever uh, we have said and done today in this meeting during our own time. I'm pleading you, honorable members, uh, with your respect. Uh, there's so many hands up here. I'm seeing, uh, I don't know whether it's a leak. I see hands. I'm seeing it. Honorable Sibia, Honorable Malomane, Honorable Denise, Honorable Mama Bulo. And maybe I'm suspecting these are hands of contribution, which I've noted. Can we, with your respect to Honorable Mshlonga and Honorable uh, Sibia, go back to what Honorable Spear is supposed to do of asking and uh, interacting with the presentation. Honorable Spear. Thanks, Chairperson. And my first question, what is the estimated return on investment on, of hosting the World Cup? The second one, how much will the tickets cost? Will they be affordable to the general public? The last one. When will the World Cup audited financial statements be readily available for the committee to perform oversight over expenditure? I thank you, Chairperson. Yes, Bonge. Thank you, Honorable Sibi. Uh, Honorable Malomani. <laughs> Honourable. Thank you, Honourable Thank you, Honourable Chair. Can I switch off my video? Yes, Honourable Malomane, very beautiful. Like your top. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Greetings to Honourable Members, our staff, the department, and our guests. Let me also join in welcoming the presentation from the overview from the department and the World Cup board. So my first question, Chair, it will be based on the composition of the board. So because the composition of the board of the Netball 2023 World Cup is mainly composed of senior departmental officials, members of Netball SA and a representative from SASCO. Why are there no representative from civil society as well as independent members that are not from government entities? As this is a World Cup, it includes everyone. That is my first question. The second question is that how many African team have qualified for Netball World Cup? How does the 2023 World Cup aim to develop the sport of netball on the continent, given the limited participation of African teams? I also want to put a request, especially to Netball South Africa, that please, they must be on the top six, that they mustn't qualify because they are taking part as they are, they are the host, but they must make sure that they're on the top six so that they automatically qualify, not just because they are hosting. The other question is that on the legacy program, it stated that 20 to 30 courts upgrading and building. Can they clarify to us how many are they going to build between the 20 or to the 30 courts and how many are they going to be upgraded? On the project plan for 2022, there are activities that were supposed to be finalized between April and May. Have these activities been finalized? If not, what the challenges are? My last question, it will be, netball in South Africa is not yet a professionalized sport. Is the situation similar globally? What plans are in place to professionalize the sport of a similar standard as seen in sporting code like rugby, football, and cricket? I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Malomane, Honorable Denise. 
Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, all. Thank you for the opportunity and the thank you for the presentation. I um, just get my camera off. Um, I would like just to request that um, the DG, or sorry, I'd like to request to staff who take the minutes that the quotation of the DG, uh, uh, Madiba's quote, yes. and also the Stephen Kobe quote, mm -hmm. also be in the minutes please it's very powerful and very important uh, secondly i would like to thank the the ministry and the department netball south africa and all the stakeholders for their engagement thus far and the steering committees and pre pre preparing for the world cup uh, up to now i think it's important and bold positive steps been taken and i think we are making progress so i would like to express my appreciation um, to Netball South Africa. Um, Chairperson, my first question is, is also linked to members that have asked before the breakdown of the 19 million. DG must have explained that. Um, I, I'm not sure what the legacy board representation means but, uh, next to the 19 million in the presentation that the DG spoke about. Um, I also would like to know. Um, you know, how, if I, what are you going to do, what um, contingency plans we will have, you know, given the uncertainty about COVID, because uh, we can't continue as if COVID don't exist and the 50% of, of availability. Um, in other words, if, if, if the tournament will happen in, you know, in the near future and, and the COVID status don't change, so how would a netball be able to or government to adapt to this to this um, World Cup. Um, Chairperson, I also would like to know um, who's going to pay for the fan parks and the viewing centres um, that will be in the provinces. We'll take financial responsibility because we do not, you know, learning from soccer World Cups and previous World Cups that we do not want to end up with again um, facilities that that. Um, that are not uh, taking in the legacy part of the of, of the World Cup. They are not there for continuation. Um, I have a question, Chairperson, about the lead sponsor, the progress on that lead sponsor. Uh, what if we do not get sufficient sponsors? I'm not sure about the status of the economy at that time. What what are we going to do? What's the fallback position if there's no uh, lead sponsor? You know, what is the percentage that we expect from the lead sponsor to? Uh, to fill in the amount uh, to cover the total cost of the of the World Cup, Netball World Cup, and then uh, I want to support my previous member's question on the on the Western Cape twenty to twenty to thirty courts. Um, the the proposed, uh, I would like to know where in the Western Cape that will would be, in which municipalities and so on. And then uh, the breakdown of the 177 million, that amount was mentioned. I didn't see it, I must be honest. But that amount was mentioned. Um, uh, that's the 90 million of the, that the DG mentioned is that, that included in the 177 million. It looks like it. Um, and, and of course, the, the full breakdown of the 177 million is very important. And then uh, my last question, Chairperson. Um, Will the will will be not we sorry will the the legacy projects or the provinces or the municipalities or netball clubs receive uh, netballs uh, balls itself with a mark twenty twenty three World Cup will, will that be distributed uh, to the legacy legacy project or to the towns and then also want to know what is the cost of that balls in terms of the tender because when I buy balls for my constituency I pay about between 149 and 250, uh, which we do, and I'm sure many people sponsor. But what will the, what will the government pay? What will the provinces have to pay? And where is this money going to come from if there's going to be netballs on tender that will be distributed? What will the cost of that balls be? Um, but I'm, my last point here, I'm concerned about the November event, the test events. I heard about August and Pretoria in November. Uh, there's a question mark about November, so I'm just asking the netball 
um, leadership to really urgently make a decision because it's not a good sign if we don't have medium of long-term planning. I'm sure they are finalizing it, but it's important that that information comes out. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Hey, Honorable Maloman. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Honorable Mamabulo. Ma I'm sorry. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. <laughs> Uh, no, no, firstly, I want to appreciate um, the presentation. It is a good one, man. It reminds me of the 2010 um, LOC. They were well prepared about Daniel Jordan. They knew their days, their welcoming days, their launch, gala dinners, the program, and everything. And I'm also impressed over even this one. Um, even this one, they know a date. I mean, I'm talking about June and July next year. So we can sort of they are well prepared and um, we're going to have a very wonderful World Cup. We wish, we all wish to be there. I mean, uh, even the number of Fridays have been activated. They're going well, very well, even though they gave me um, double XL t shirts. Maybe they thought it was yours, uh, Honorable Chairs. <laughs> but yeah, it's going well. <laughs> My question is only one or two regarding them. <laughs> They're what you call the fan parks. The fan parks, I, I am I taking them to the townships or to um, to the cities, um, to the suburbs? Because if you take them to townships, they may have a larger crowd, um, like what we have seen during the World Cup in 2010. The last question will be around the uh, what you call the mobilization um, in villages and townships. How are we doing that? Because want to see everybody having this uh, T-shirt off and uh, both Fridays. Other than that, Chairperson, I don't have uh, much uh, to say. I'm impressed and uh, we should be seen supporting um, such initiatives as uh, government leaders. We can't, be all... we can't always be lambasting people to say, no, hey, where's the report? Hey, where's the what, 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 what? Hey, when I... Uh, well, man, we must always be seen uh, being positive and being uh, positive people of Sabah and proud South Africans and also Patriotism um, is very important to get to this matter, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable uh, Mama Bolo. Uh, my, my very few questions. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank the presentation. Um, the only thing that also I want to check <clears throat> uh, from the department she was saying that uh, out of that 90 million, uh, you are going to give uh, them in trenches. When did your first trench and the last trench going to, to start? And then <clears throat> on the second question, um, I'm still hearing the presentation saying that they are, you are still going to um, appoint LOC members. What are those? What are they going to do? And what skills do you want when you are uh, still uh, going to appoint more people? Uh, are you, what are you short of? Um, and I. Uh, I may ask that the recruitment for other committees and uh, the local people are going to benefit, let alone the officials, those who are in the LOC, but the local people, how are they going to um, benefit in this uh, tournament, which is uh, you really on the spot in your preparation. Uh, but I don't hear uh, what are the creation of jobs uh, to this. Because uh, in some other times past 2030, 20, the building of stadiums uh, and maybe um, the the local people, uh, if you can uh, tell us, what do you see 
uh, your good selves uh, with the local leadership. Uh, I'm not talking of, of the officials, the local who can benefit in whatever we are talking, your fan park, your hospitality, your transport. So in order that uh, when some of us having constituents here and um, we having our own uh, government, uh, who's a uh, provincial government, we must know uh, wh what is it that we must also trying to concretize and mobilize uh, and take care to the people that this is coming event and you can benefit APC. I, I thank you. If I can uh, take it back to the presenter patients and you locate uh, your colleagues for the responses and uh, after you have exhausted your questions. I thank you. <coughs> Uh, th 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 thank, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Um, I, I don't know whether I, I should start or it should be the DG that... It must be you. Okay, no. okay, thank you very, thank you very much. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll, as, as we respond, some, I'll, as, as you said, I'll give to uh, board members and um, the office team to, to assist on responding. Um, in terms of uh, the questions from Honorable Mshongo, um I'm not clear about the first one around uh, uh, NSA versus um, the board, but I think it must be clear that um, our responsibility as a board, it, it's for us to manage the project, the deliver of the World Cup. Um, in terms of uh, awarding of the event, the event has been awarded to NSA, but obviously in terms of the uh, heads of terms as it is, uh, NSA has been given a responsibility to establish a organizing committee. And that's why now there's this board that has been put together to run with the event. Um, and in terms of the structure as per the big document that we got, um, uh, it's the responsibility of the board to appoint uh, the LOC. Um, as I said, um, we, we have appointed uh, Ms. Priscilla Masisi. She's the tournament director. And maybe just to even respond to uh, uh, Honorable Member Veronica, we don't have a CEO. Our CEO is the tournament director. So she's the one who's going to be heading the, the, the LOC. Uh, the board's responsibility around the issue of appointment of the LOC has been mainly about the senior uh, management team. Uh, already we've appointed the tournament director. We've appointed the head of Head of uh, Finance and Administration. Um, we've just concluded, uh, the panel has just concluded on the head of marketing, which the board is going to um, finalize uh, in its board meeting on Thursday. And then there's two other outstanding um, positions uh, at a high level, which is the head of operations, uh, that also uh, we've received uh, CVs, and uh, the tournament director is going to be. Uh, getting involved in terms of how to deal with that. Um, and then the other one is more about the technical appointment. So, so <clears throat> at that high level, in terms of senior management, it's the board's responsibility. And I maybe I must indicate as well to, um, uh, to you, Honorable Chair, that um, we just didn't want to appoint um, some of the heads before appointing the tournament director. I think uh, one of our delays was the appointment of tournament director. We should have done it last year, but unfortunately, we had to re-advertise the position. But I think that there's, that there's momentum since uh, Cecilia has come through, and she's pushing to make sure that that is taken care of. Um, uh, I'll, 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 on the issues of the duties, uh, I'll, I'll ask my colleagues to do that, but maybe let me respond to the ones that uh, I'll be able to, and then I'll ask them to, to respond to the others. In, on issues of secondment, as a board, we have agreed that, um, I mean, in honesty, uh, currently we're only left with 14 months before the event. And we are aware that 
Uh, other people might not be interested to take jobs for just one year. And that's why in terms of our strategy around the workforce, we have agreed that we look at it in two in uh, twofold. One will be through our uh, recruitment policy, where we'll, we'll do adverts and all that. But even the issue of secondment, we need to have a plan. And I must just indicate that how secondment is going to be done. If you're going to uh, uh, appoint a person on a secondment position and the person is earning a particular salary, ours is to, to add if that person uh, has been earning less. But obviously, if it's over, then those are the discussions that we're going to have when we do those kind of, kind of appointments. Um, yeah. Maybe let me just deal with the uh, Honorable Mishlomo's one. Can, can I request a Blanche? Can you please just respond to the duties of a tournament director and also the head of marketing, just in brief to indicate their responsibilities? Who's that? Blanche? Apologies. I've opened the document. Apologies, Madam Chair and Honorable um, um, Madam Beauty. Um, yes, the, the, the job description of the tournament director, which is seen by World Netball as uh, one of the most important roles to play in, in delivering a very successful uh, tournament. Um, so the tournament director will work closely with the World Netball technical delegate, as well as the uh, 2023 uh, board. Ensuring compliance with all governing laws, policies, and procedures, um, compliance with all World Netball regulations and requirements. Madam, this is one of the World Netball, which in the time when we signed agreement is, is with IMF, is the biggest income generator for World Netball. They don't have other um, um, income generations or generative um, events apart from world events. Um, therefore, there's clear guidelines and there's clear mentioning in the heads of terms how the funding um, should be uh, spent as well. So the tournament director um, is also responsible for drafting and overseeing implementation of the overall events plan, which will include operational marketing, communication, technical, and others which I can't think of now. Strategic planning and organization. This is a big, big duty for her, ensuring the achievement of strategies with all the heads of, of the workforce. Um, she also needs to develop and maintain strategic relationships and the ability to build trust and confidence with the stakeholders, uh, developing and achieving high quality strategies that align with the objectives of the World Cup 2023. We are guided by the INF Event and Commercial Operations Manual, and she's the, the caretaker um, to follow those steps uh, very, very carefully. Consistent, continuous, um, careful, prudent supervision of operations to guarantee the success of the international game initiating and confirming high-quality investment decisions in order to ensure maximized overall profits. Her very close um, um, staff member in the office would be the head of uh, finance, providing leadership and tactical support to all her functional teams, ensuring that all organizational systems, policies, mm -hmm. reflect our core values. She also needs to coordinate and ensure strong execution across the leadership team in accordance with the strategic event plan and drive strong cross-team collaboration. And that is one of her biggest jobs as well. Overseeing financial strategy, supporting the finance and legal team in the development of financial models, budgets, analysis, leverage data to drive key operational decisions working with the head of finance to implement a long-term strategy that is operationally and financially sound, responsible in accounting for the control of income, cash flow and expenditure, together with the um, head of finance, engaging directly with the board to ensure financial transparency 
and to communicate key financial and operational goals and priorities. Working with the head of finance and other team leaders to implement a defined performance measurement system underlying metrics, the KPAs, it's her duty. Establishing operational benchmarks and resources needed to achieve strategic goals, proactively driving improvements as necessary, working um, concert with a, a leadership team to set standards and accountability and clearly define measurements of success. It is also her duty to report regularly um, on, on, the, um, um, on the work of the, the LOC to the board and um, obviously to, to World Netball. There were other questions um, raised, which if, if Jay allows me to, um, the World, World Netball um, um, owns the World Cup. They've given us the right to host it. The guidelines, the financial guidelines is clear according to the heads of terms. So we, we, if you want to, to bid to host, um, some of the honorable members mentioned the amounts, which was um, um, somewhere. So we, we pay a, a member, member Congress subsidy fee. We pay international development fund fee. We pay a sanction fee. We forecast a surplus of first, but didn't succeed because we didn't project a million pound profit, which is one of the criteria for World Nickel. If you mm. want, you need to project a guarantee um, a surplus of a million pound. So we had a guaranteed element of forecast surplus after uh, we revisited our, um, our budget after our visit um, to the UK. We, we came back and project over a million um, to be distributed as INF surplus share. That money, 55% um, will go to the World Netball and the balance are shared 25% to the hosting country and the rest um, to the other countries. That is a guaranteed surplus that we have to do. Then we also um, had commitments um, of um, um, sharing um, uh, funds uh, part of the surplus with uh, participating members um, and also INF surplus share, you know, that I've mentioned to you. Um, we've, we've got um, clear, clear um, guidelines of where to support financially and that was, um, that was for um, development fund, knowledge of transfer program, um, and then also um, the, the uh, legacy plan. Those are all the, the commitments financially. We are different from, from rugby, um, honorable um, chair. We, we, pay, we pay and then we have to make money. The purpose of Netball South Africa to host, to bid to host the request was really to, to, to get us closer to that professional um, side. We have a, a telecom league uh, running um, semi-professional, but we want a, a league like in Australia, New Zealand and England, where our players are playing, to run after this World Cup. So we're taking very well care of the income versus the expenses to, to enable Netball South Africa to be self-sufficient and become uh, leaders financially in that area. Um, Yes, and, and we are very, very experienced in hosting. We've been hosting the quad series between Australia, New Zealand, England, and South Africa, in South Africa, and we traveled there, was home and away, for five years. And that was the reason why World Netball and the top countries um, identified us as a country that has all the means and support and um, good governance. Um, that's why they've approached us to, to, to host um, the, the 
January, um, January 2023 um, event is, is a quad series. Um, it is very clear stated in our contracts with World Netball that Netball South Africa's business and World Cup 2023's business should be separated. You run your business because World Cup is 10 days gone and away. It's like a Christmas. You see it once in four years and we won't uh, easily see it back in South Africa. So um, the, the, we need to carry on with our events as planned, we have obligations towards our sponsors, but the January event is a is a very carefully planned event with top countries. And to the honourable members, you mustn't um, qualify just we present. I'm going to give you good news. We are number five, so we automatically qualify. I think I think I've answered what I could. If I missed anything, um, I can make answer later. Thank you very much, Blanche. Thank you for that. Um, and then the the on the issue of uh, have we met uh, as a board with Netball South Africa executive? Uh, I can safely confirm that we have not met with NSA executive. Um, uh, but just to indicate that within our board we've got two members of NSA, which is the CEO and the president. Uh, and our view is that in in all deliberations and all that. Um, uh, we, we offer you that they are able to give that kind of a feedback to them. But I must say that as a board, uh, we had agreed that um, in terms of stakeholder relations management, it will also be important that we must actually have meetings with our stakeholders so that we have a sense in terms of expectations. Because at the end of the day, some of the key stakeholders is more enablers for us as a board to ensure that we really deliver uh, the best ever event. Uh, in terms of audited financial statement, I'll ask our head uh, of finance to do that. Uh, but let me continue, uh, Honorable Chair, and say, uh, <clears throat> in, in terms of the, uh, there was a question from Honorable Member Veronica around the issue of Africa Day, uh, where they're asking how much of money have we received from um, uh, um, Africa Netball. And, and just to indicate that, you know, when this bid was won, it was very clear that the bid it's mainly for South Africa, but also for the continent. And, and I was uh, being seen sometimes as a big brother to some of the countries in the continent. Uh, our responsibility is actually to ensure that we share. And I think that's what also happened from uh, uh, the FIFA 2010 in terms of what, them working with the region or, or the continent. On issues of board salaries, uh, there's no board salaries that are being paid to us. Uh, uh, so I can uh, safely say uh, to, to the meeting that we're not receiving anything as board members. Um, <clears throat> obvious, one of the things that we've been uh, uh, advised, uh, and thank you again to both the Honourable Minister, the DM, and also the DG, is that uh, and we've been asked that uh, as, as this board, it would be good that we must actually go and sit with people that uh, led the FIFA 2010, so that we can be able to see in terms of some of their systems, how they, they ran this kind of thing. But I just need to, to assure and say, uh, as a board, our responsibility is to ensure that after this event, netball is, 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 is being uh, 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 put in a different uh, level. From where it is, it must really become a professional sport and actually be the biggest uh, women in sport uh, uh, structure in, in, in the country. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the netball courts, um, uh, I, I, I'm just going to indicate that we're going to use four courts at the venue for the event, but there's also about six courts which are external that are going to be used more for uh, training uh, uh, for for our teams that are going to be to be there. Steering committees have not yet uh, honourable uh, zone. The steering committees have not yet uh, been established. Um, uh, you know, the, the delay on us in appointing our TD has actually uh, made us to move slower instead of faster than what we expected. But as I said, there's momentum and we're putting place a lot of things now. And um, in our discussion with World Netball, we said to them, we're just hoping that by end of uh, uh, this year, most of the things will be in place. And I think we'll be able to provide a further update in terms of how we're progressing on that. Um, on the issue of the status on legacy project, um, I'm going to ask 
Dr. Lindenbauer to talk about how they've progressed from the Western Cape, because I think they've completed, and I think in the mix, he can also even talk about where were those facilities done within the Western Cape. And then lastly, I'll also ask just, um, I don't know if uh, the executive member from NSA is here, the one who's, who's handling the aspect of legacy from the side of NSA. Linda. Uh, good morning, uh, Chair and, and Honourable Members. Um, this is Lyndon Bauer. I'm a, from the Provincial Government of the Western Cape, and I will respond on the legacy aspects. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, in terms of the question that the Honourable Member has asked about uh, our legacy, uh, at this stage, we, we're counting uh, 51 courts that we have either upgraded or constructed, and we're also looking at the toilets that we have also established. And I will just give a list of the municipalities that we have signed agreements with, and they are in various stages of completion, depending on where their tender processes were or are. In um, We started off uh, chairperson with, um, in 20, uh, 1920 financial year, we had the West Coast Swartland, um, Garden Route, uh, Mossel Bay and George, and then the city of Cape Town at the Stephen Regan complex. We opened with Deputy Minister Marfu, uh, we opened up a, a toilet facilities as well as a change room. We believe that uh, when we talk the upgrade um, and construction of courts, then upgrade must also mean that our female players must have the ability to change in a cloakroom so that the dignity is protected and that we move away from cars and so forth. So we believe that that is also part of the establishment of the upgrading of the netball courts. So one or two municipalities um, have opted to also utilize part of the funding to upgrade those aspects. Then we we continued, we went to Essequa, uh, which is in Riversdale, and in, in Essequa they have now completed the upgrade of five courts um, in that area, and we are hoping to open those courts um, on the 28th of July, which is the one-year activation. We also have courts in Langeberg, uh, in, uh, in Robertson, as well as in Swellendam at the Powell Sport Ground. We also have uh, courts in Bredarsdorf. We also have courts in Saldana at the Ronnie Lowe. Um, then we we also, in Bergrefeer in the West Coast, we have at Rhino Park in Piketburg, Swartland, it's Darling and Kalbaskral. We also have in the Mossel Bay, Groetbrak area, and then in Prince Albert, we also have the multi-purpose courts, and they've indicated to me that they're using part of our funding to uh, build the the ablution facilities and the change rooms uh, at the two courts that they have as well. And then we also have uh, Matsikama, Dwarungbai Sports Field, Netball Courts, Stellenbosch is Groendal Sport Grounds, Langeberg, Montague and Ashton, uh, Drakenstein, Weltefriede Sport Field, Kleinmont Sport Facility in the Overberg, and then at Otaniqua Park, we also will be having courts that uh, is being constructed. So we, um, what I will do, Chair, with your permission, is I will send to the Chair uh, the number of courts and the number of the upgraded and the new courts. At the moment, my figures that I have says nine being upgraded, nine being constructed new, but I just want to confirm that physically, um, and then we will make the distinction between upgrade and constructed. I think it's a very important distinction that the honorable member has asked, uh, as, as my figures at the moment, only as courts and not the distinction, but we will certainly make that. And we've also added the three multi-purpose courts that the National uh, Department of Sport, Arts and Culture has established in Stellenbosch, <laughs> Uh, as well as in Lanesburg and in Beaufort West. So at this stage, Madam Chair, um, we're looking, we have 51 on our on our books that we are in various uh, areas being formatted, but the important one for us is, the, is that in every district in the Western Cape, there will be that. In terms of the second question about the fan parks, uh, in the Western Cape, we have budgeted 5 million rand towards fan parks and viewing centers for, for the Western Cape. Um, in... 
we are currently busy addressing all municipalities in the Western Cape and inviting them to be a partner with us. Uh, we've indicated to them that um, we are busy with the final costings now, but uh, it will have to be a 50-50 partnership with municipalities as the provincial government and the Netball World Cup board will not be able to cover all expenditure. We're making a distinction, uh, uh, honorable members and chairperson, between a fan park, as you traditionally know it, with some of the, the, the merchandise and some of the artists, etc., and a viewing center. A viewing center can be a civic center, a community hall, a two-some center, anywhere where you can put up a screen because uh, then you don't need all the other merchandising to take place. Mm -hmm. So we, we're busy with those discussions about viewing centers and fan parks at the moment. So from our side as the Western Cape, we have budgeted for that. And um, I will leave the question of the other provinces to, to patients as a board and chairperson, as well as to, to Ms. Masisi. So I think those are the, the key questions for me, uh, patients. I hand back to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, um, thank you. This is a very important information. And we are we'll accepting and we will welcome the information if you can give us according to your is it your doula or my drunkest day you always host according to that we'll accept that thank you patience thank you <laughs> so th thank you very much uh, honorable chair uh, <clears throat> uh, can i request uh, either blanche or a member of nsa just to talk about the legacy from their side i know uh, they've already started with training around the country and also they've done a bit uh, for Botswana as well. So can I just allow um, members of NSA to talk to that issue around about the status of legacy project to date? Madam Chair, if I may introduce um, our director coaching um, took full responsibility for that development and attendance. Um, just before that, Honorable Chair, I just forgot to, to answer on the super sport uh, 54 million and it's an important answer from our side in netball south africa the amount is not correct but it's not for world netball our um our sponsor came on board as they did with the rugby um in 2019 and said we want your team to train as much as possible we will fund this whole press process, it's called Project Victory. They accommodate it in, in Stellenbosch and they get... What's going on? I, I think we, I don't know whether we lost her. Yeah. Okay, can the director uh, uh, be able to respond while we lost on the issue of the legacy? Good morning, um, Honorable Chair. Um, I'm Anneli Lucas. I am the director of Coaches Netball South Africa, and I am also the one that is um, driving the international um, legacy program for, for um, Nepal. Um, the countries that we um, envisioned assisting was Botswana, Ghana, and USA. We decided to start with Botswana. Um, we, we will assist them with preparing their, their national team for the upcoming African qualifiers. Um, and then we, we will assist um, these three countries in um, developing their coaching staff, um, more coaches. So 15 coaches from, from these three countries will be um, trained as coaches. And um, we've, did so, we've divided this in, in phases. So we have four phases that we will work on. And phase one um, was to, to um, ask them to assist us with the name of the potential coaches. We will host four-day coaching programs with them. Our phase two will be um, going back to the countries to, to assist with facilitation throughout the year. Um, our phase three will um, be to assist them to um, get their level two accreditation 
And then we will also assist um, them to try and facilitate this to, to grow the sport and the coaches in their country. So we will assist with a structured framework moving forward with their coaching system. So that was the, um, the vision for, for assisting the international countries and it, our international legacy program. Thank, thank you, uh, uh, Director. Honorable uh, Chair, uh, maybe let me also uh, respond to, I see most of the questions are also around funding um, and marketing, and I'm going to give this to our Tournament Director and our Head of Finance and Administration to respond to as the last part. But I just also need to indicate that um, on the question from Honorable uh, Malumane, um, obviously, we, we, we're just waiting for the qualifiers, Africa qualifier, then we can be able to respond to his question around how many African teams have qualified. Um, but maybe for now, can I request the TD to respond to the whole issue around our strategy around uh, fan parks and all that? Uh, because at the end of the day, one of the critical aspects from our side, once we've appointed the head of marketing, that's going to be the person that is going to drive that whole marketing aspect for the event. And, and then also I'll ask Gerardo to talk to the issues of finances, including the audited financial statements. Tournament Director. Thank you, Chairperson and Honorable Members. Uh, in terms of our activation, we are basically going to be targeting the existing school leagues to create hype on the ground. And we'll also include hamper giveaways during the school's league visit. And also what we will be doing is to ensure that the activation will also be at the netball leagues across the country for professional lower league clubs and social leagues. So we'll also be doing the activations, uh, ensuring that our district uh, together with NSA are very active on the ground and also to ensure that even in rural areas, we reach those kids in the rural areas and townships. So the activation won't be only in the, in the, in the urban areas. We are also going to be doing our road shows. Uh, we'll be having the portable nets and stand hoops and balls. And also throughout our activation, our broadcast partners will also be on site so that we can uh, capture all these activation campaigns that we'll be uh, 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 engaging on and to ensure that everybody has uh, an ability to see and are in, uh, also part of the, of the program. The Western Cape will have a bigger focus as the host province and will have more marketing uh, activities going in there. So we will be doing the activations at the malls as well. The universities Priscilla, and the airports. Priscilla, Ma, did you show your face? Oh, one was we do we do want those beautiful faces here. <laughs> okay, yeah, Emma. There, there hey. she is. Before the members are calling you to stop because they, they didn't see you. Thank you so much. Thank you can switch off now. So that is our activation plan and the mobilization. So just to assure honorable members that it won't be only in the urban areas, but we'll target the townships and the, and the rural areas to ensure that everyone is, uh, is covered. In terms of creation of jobs, uh, we are going to be having a volunteer program where we'll be employing local peoples to ensure that they are also part of the, of the, of the World Cup. And uh, in terms of the job opportunities, there will be the hospitality. In terms of hospitality, I think uh, we are in negotiations with the Southern Sun to be also the to come on board as the sponsor. So mainly it will be around the uh, 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 Southern Sun, but we are also going to be using uh, local travel agencies uh, to provide uh, for the to, uh, all, the ticketing. Also, companies will also ensure that it's local companies. The transport. Uh, and also the creative artist will also be involved. We are going to be launching our mascot in the, in, in the 28th of July as a run up to our 365 days countdown. So that creative uh, artist who will be doing the mascot will also be local people within the, the country. So that's in terms of our job creation strategies that will also make sure that everyone is involved and is part of the process. And I think the other question was on the, on the netball courts, they were, we are buying 13 courts the wooden sprung floors. We will be using nine uh, for the World Cup. The other ones in terms of our legacy program, two have to go to the African countries, and the one will be remaining with netball. 
and the other ones will be going to other provinces after the World Cup. But the ones that we're going to be actually using, it will be nine for the World Cup. We are going to be having six, uh, uh, four external uh, uh, venues, training venues. So the four will be used at the uh, locations that will be identified by the city together with NSA and the province which will be training venues outside the city ICC, because in the city ICC will only have two playing venues and two warm-up uh, uh, venues. So the external training venues will also have to use those uh, 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 netball courts. Uh, the sprung floors will also be installed there on the external venues, training venues. In terms of the finance, I will ask Gerardo uh, Odendal, our CFO, to do a breakdown on the finances. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you, President. Um, we must uh, try uh, to be faster. Uh, at 12.30, there are those members who are going to board the bus, going to the plenary. So we're still having one, one item uh, that will not yet get it on your suppose this discussion at 11, according to location of time. Yes, if you still have something before I give DG, let me give it that. I'm not yet calling hands. I'm still saying that uh, they must finish their uh, uncertain questions and I must give DG also. Maybe if I'm seeing hand, maybe some of the answers they will be coming from the department. Let's show it, honorable members. Patience. Thank you, Mike. Okay, can Gerardi speak? And then after that, I'm going to allow the DDG as part of our board as well to respond to some of the things. Thank you very much, Chair. Gerardi. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, Thank you, Madam Chair and, and um, honorable members. Excuse me, I'm a bit sick. Hopefully um, the question earlier by one of the members around COVID is not something that's applicable to me at this stage, um, but um, all good in the office and excited to, to continue with our planning. Um, I will respond quickly on some of the um, questions on the you final. Can, okay. Yeah, thank you. I was going to say we've seen you can take off your hmm. veto. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, on the, on the question on the audited financial statements, the financial statements have been completed for the year end um, 31 or 30 March um, 2022, also for April and for May this year. We are presenting those numbers to the board meeting on Thursday, upon which we can appoint an independent auditor to complete the auditing. I cannot see that will take a lot of time to complete. Um, a lot of the expenditure um, is only coming in the next financial year, so that should be a, a fairly easy task for us to complete fairly quickly. Um, and then just on, 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 on to respond on the breakdown of the 170 million, um, you know, a big portion of that is commercial funding, and the other portion is public funding. Of the public funding, I think we've answered the majority of the questions around the 90 millions. So far, we've received the first two tranches. Um, we've also expended all the money on the first tranche and we are busy to commit um, the money on the second tranche of 30 million. We are reporting um, you know, to, to, to Dr. Lyndon Bauer's department um, around those tranches and in, in accordance with the memorandum of understanding that we got with them. Um, and then the commercial funding, which is for tickets and for sponsorship and for broadcast is going very well at this stage. I think not going to elaborate too much on that, but there's a really good plan in place to, to hopefully exceed our budget forecasts on those numbers. Um, yeah, I think there's nothing else specifically unless, um, yeah, no, there's nothing else specifically on finance that I'd like to touch on now. Thank you so much. Um, uh, uh, let me give to DG. DG, uh, oh, I've forgotten that DDG is part of your good sense. Oh, yes, DDG, yes, yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you very much, um, Chairperson of the Board, and uh, good morning, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee please. and Sorry, members. Please. 
Oh, okay. okay, there we are. Good morning, Chairperson. Yes, it is me. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Chairperson, thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity to speak as a board member at this forum. Chairperson, let me indicate and indicate and also emphasize what the colleague uh, uh, Ms. Delaguerre had to indicate that there are two separate entities. Netball South Africa is a federation and Netball, the World Cup board is a company that is wholly owned by Netball South Africa. So we are accountable to them and hence they have two board members. On the question of why is the board only made up of government officials? Madam Chair, uh, let me just quickly in my, other, in my other role, indicate that Netball South Africa since 2013, in 2013, they were the Federation of the Year. And when they become the Federation of the Year, they get extra support to actually improve on an area of their work. And in Netball South Africa, it was the first step towards professionalization. And hence, it gave birth to the Netball Premier League. It was called the Brutal Fruit Premier League. And it's evolved now, Madam Chair, to become the Telcom Netball League. And you would see that through that process, the Netball players had started to get some remuneration towards when they participated. You know, their fees, very small amounts, they got player of the year incentives, et cetera, to the extent that some of them even started to ply their trade in other leagues in Europe, in England and in Australia and in New Zealand, et cetera. So those are the good stories coming out of there. And I think, Madam Chair, the next step was for us to host a World Cup. And Netball South Africa then came to government to say, government, we want to do this. We do not have all the funds. Please, can you support us? And the three spheres of government then supported them. And we didn't even go to cabinet at that stage, Madam Chair, to say, in terms of the bidding and hosting of events, you will go to cabinet to say, we need money from cabinet. Because the three spheres of government then committed to funding this World Cup. And hence you would see, Madam Chair, that 90 million has been um, you know, uh, provided by the National Department of Sport and the other two tiers of government have also committed funding towards this. So as is indicated by the, the finance, the CFO to say the three, three, uh, in three tranches, 30 million rands a year was given through the Department of Sport in Western Cape, who has signed an agreement with the Netball World Cup board. And that expenditure and on an annual basis, it has been accounted for through the Netball, um, through the Western Cape Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. So, Madam Chair, I think we've done, uh, that's the support we've given because remember, this is, a, this is one of the codes of sport that's number one, a priority code of sport. It's one of the big five. It focuses on women. So we, were, we, we, we had to support this because it's one of the bigger codes of sports. The first time ever Netball has put their hand out to host this World Cup. So we had to get behind this code and support them to grow the footprint of netball, which is mostly a women's code of sport throughout the country. I think the important thing we must also indicate, Madam Chair, is that you know, netball can be played on any surface, but we need to move towards the professionalization as well. And hence with the netball sports courts as a legacy, with um, uh, we, we, we believe that we can move towards where they will be, be playing on the, the, uh, uh, the wooden floors. And that was the other legacy that we commit to, to as well. So Madam Chair, I think our support, the, the support that we've got from government as a whole is helping to get this World Cup off the ground. And I know that there are questions around why, is the, why isn't the board made up of other partners and civil society and et cetera. But Madam Chair, we're a very small board. And this is an event that is confined to one province. It's not like the FIFA World Cup where you had 32 teams in eight provinces. So it was much bigger. It was a bigger tournament. Here you've got 16 teams we're playing in one province. You also look at the number of people that can be accommodated in the venue. It's a small number of people. So if you're looking at the economic benefits to the country, it, it will not be the same as rugby or netball or even cricket or football or even cricket. So the profits are going to be much smaller, even to netball. But importantly, Madam Chair, we want to make sure that 
the the younger youngest child or the young girl in the rural area will be able to enjoy the benefits that this World Cup brings. And as a, as a chairperson has said, after the World Cup, we want to see a change in netball. We want to see professionalization. We want to see more clubs. We want to see good governance. And I think Netball South Africa has demonstrated over the years, Madam Chair, that they can host major events. So the questions that are being asked of what's going to happen about the Africa Cup, and we're worried about you know, this event that's going to come, the qualifiers, the, te the Telcom Netball World, the Telcom Netball League is being hosted live on TV. We can all see the organization that has gone into it, the administration. So they have really vast capacity. They have the capacity to host those events. And I believe, Madam Chair, together, collectively, we want to see the best ever Netball World Cup on African soil. Supersport has committed to making sure they have a full female host of broadcast personnel that will be broadcasting this World Cup as well. So that is also in ensuring that we affirm young women. So that will be a first ever, I think, in a World Cup where all women will be broadcasting, will be in the broadcast team. And, and if you look at Netball South Africa as well, the team, we want to make sure that at the end of the day, we can't be hosting any event and we don't win. So uh, all the support is now also behind the team to make sure that we win. Um, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. I think there's a lot of the questions that have already been uh, covered. And um, um, the whole idea is to get the country also behind this World Cup. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, DG. Thank you so much, DG. Can, well, can thank I you so much. DG, uh, thank please. you, so Chairperson. No, thanks, uh, Chairperson. Um, I think uh, the colleagues have covered um, a lot of uh, ground. Um, the only thing that um, also the question about the spread of the 90 million um, uh, was covered by Herat, um, uh, that the first trenches and the second trenches have been done. What is left now is the last 30 million rent that we will then disperse. Is it included in the RN 77 million? Yes, I think it is correct. Um, and that, that is the overall budget. Will we run at a loss or at a um, profit? We believe that we're planning for a profit because a lot of uh, sponsorship and the broadcasting rights will also assist over and above the ticket sales uh, that are aimed at uh, making sure that uh, this is not run at a loss. The issue of the COVID uh, plan or alternative, uh, yes, there are measures that are in place uh, that have been discussed, um, but at this stage, as soon as the, the full constitution of the committee and the net joins, uh, they will be looking at all possible um, risks that would be associated with this, uh, including in particular, the issue of what depends uh, if it is a, we are faced with an, a, a, a pandemic at that time. Uh, but that has been considered as one of the risk areas uh, that the team then will be clear about the concrete plans as we get um, a closer. Uh, but as part of the bigger risk plan that has already been identified a uh, chairperson as one of the things we'll have to mitigate. There was then a question in relation to the to who will pay for the fan parks, as we did indicate, Chairperson, and that uh, that will be in relation to uh, what Western Cape will be doing. Sorry, the city of Cleveland and Western Cape have committed; they will be doing. Um, but Minister has been engaging with his uh, counterparts in the MECs uh, to see where they can contribute so that. Uh, even in the provinces where this won't be taking place, the South African citizens are able to watch and enjoy. And that is where that, the, that is what we call the MinMEC, uh, assist with that matter on how they can best support uh, what Honorable Mamabul was raising about the township and the rural areas or villages, uh, how they can benefit uh, in this regard. And I'm sure that uh, with those engagements with the MECs, 
uh, who have committed to say they will do the best they can to support this, where one of the key things would be access uh, to that. I'm not sure if the team, Honorable Chairperson, responded on the issue of the affordability of the ticket sales. And that was a question that was raised about the, the cost structure of the tickets. Uh, and I thought that maybe either the CEO will talk to that or uh, Gerard, the CFO, uh, in this regard, the Chairperson, uh, just so that the colleagues uh, so they answer that question. But I think, Chairperson, uh, the breakdown uh, of the budgets uh, is available and we will be able to provide that uh, as, as uh, Gerard has committed and that we will then give the committee those breakdown of what are the cost drivers and, and how did we get to this. It was a huge exercise we had to do um, from initiated by the interim committee at the time and then as a board to finalize the budget and the cost drivers and that's how they could come to that and say 27 million rent. I think we will just share that uh, just to save time for now, Chairperson. But all those things have been factored. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Tichi. Honorable members, Simpio? Simpio? Um, um, the, thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chair, and good morning to the members of the committee. I think there was just Can one- Honorable members lower their hands? Honorable members, please. Yes, simply. Um, uh, just DJ, uh, good morning and good morning to the members of the board as well. Uh, I think there was one request made on the the legacy court in Gauteng, where exactly it is. It is 295 Silupitema Street, Mushakeng, Ranfontaine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any member of uh, the team wanted to say something that you think that it's not answered? Thank you, Simpio. I was having the hand of Honorable, uh, Honorable oh, Sumai, Thank you, thank and you Chris, very much. And Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Honorable members, I'll come to you. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, I think uh, we didn't respond to the issue around uh, the legacy project and will there be equipment, attire, et cetera, that supports it? And then what will be the cost and who will, how will, go will government pay, et cetera? I think it came from Honorable Dennis. I think what we need to indicate that with the legacy projects that we're building, the multipurpose sports courts, it's a standard, Madam Chair, when we build any multi-purpose sports... Denise, lower your hand. Uh, just a moment, uh, 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 did, did you? Um, okay. I have noticed the hands, but I was still, as I'm chairing, saying that to, to the team, they must uh, finalize the questions. And then from there, I'll, I'll, I'll call the hands. Let's, let's give the team to answer our questions. Did you see? Okay, no, thank you, Tony. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I was saying, when we build the, the multipurpose sports courts, and as we hand it over, we always provide equipment and attire, not only for netball, but also for the other codes of sport. Because Madam Chair, those, those are multipurpose sports courts. So those five codes that are, uh, that can be played on the court. But in this case now for the legacy, there's a special court only for netball as well. So we will provide equipment and attire when we hand over those legacy uh, courts to those schools once they're completed. And how do we procure it? Yes, Madam Chair, we will follow the government procurement processes um, to uh, procure the equipment and attire for those legacy projects. and. When we go into the provinces as well, there's, there's these, these form part of the outreach programs. The provinces then also um, uh, procure equipment and attire um, for these multipurpose sports courts. So 
Um, Madam Chair, it will follow a government procurement process. We cannot tell you what the cost is, but we are working. We have a transversal tender where we look at costs, you know, ensuring that we negotiate costs with suppliers, et cetera, so that there is uniformity in price. And this is based on a uh, benchmark that we do when we actually uh, award the tender for uh, equipment and attire. Uh, the Netball World Cup, uh, Netball South try Africa- to, Try to, 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 to be fast, did, did, did. Okay. we don't have I'm enough done. time. I'm yeah. done, Madam Chair. Netball Thank can you. speak about the Netball World Cup and how. Please don't relax, uh, colleagues of DG, when you're answering us. We don't have enough time. Uh, any other input? I, I think Take your, me, me, take your hand me. down, uh, uh, DG Sumai. Patience? No, no, uh, Honorable Chair, I thought maybe Priscilla wanted to respond to the issue of ticket affordability. So yes, please. Raise the hand. Priscilla. Please. Thank you, Chairperson. The, we are finalizing the, the pricing for the tickets, but basically we'll be having three uh, categories of tickets uh, uh, sales. We are going to be doing stationary uh, tickets whereby we sell them per, se per sessions. We will be having the expensive ones, middle one, and we'll also be having the cheap ones. We'll be only using two arenas at the CTICC. So the first arena where we'll, the main games will be, it's, it's, got, it's got a seating capacity of around 4,800. And the arena two is got about 1,000 seating capacity where we are mainly going to be selling uh, lower end tickets. And we're also going to be accommodating uh, school children in there that will be coming to view the games. So in terms of the exact pricing, we haven't finalized on that. Once we finalize on that, we will share it with the members of the parliament. I think the other question also that we didn't respond to is on the, the cost of the ball. The World Cup net, uh, ball is fully sponsored by the uh, uh, Gilbert through the World Netball. And we haven't uh, finalized on the pricing for the replica ball. We will be expecting that ball, that ball, we're expecting it to arrive in July in the country. And thereafter, then we'll sit with our commercial team to look at the replica balls, how much will they be uh, uh, costing once we have decided on that. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Now, uh, let me caution the honorable members about their time. I was having an, a hand from Honorable uh, Veronica hand from Honorable Mshongo, hand from Honorable Dennis, just to be hand from Honorable Zond, brief to the point, Honorable Members, I thank you. <coughs> hey, person, yes. um, I think the question I have is um, important. I just want to double check. Um, the COO has been appointed uh, of, uh, is also, um, I just want to find out, is SASCOP involved in any way? Because um, the minister appointed this, uh, the COO of the SASCO board. And if the board, for some reason, would be um, reported to SASCO, then would there not be an inflict of, uh, 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 of interest, if a conflict of interest, if um, the CEO is also then the, the chairperson of the Netball World Cup? Just clarity on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, point taken. Uh, Honorable Mshongo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I think Bazalanga, you are playing with us. How can you have a total cost of sales of 12 million, but you did not finalize the ticket sales pricing? How do you come? How? What is the, what analyze the total 12 million ticket sales? Why do you don't know exactly how much it's a ticket? Pay expensive? Cheap, middle. How, 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 how did you come up to this 12 million? One of the things she have asked the structure of the top management. Can we get that? The equipment part, but the board is dealing with that. I think they must send it to us. Another issue I've asked that I must go and see for myself. There's a primary school in Gauteng that has been earmarked, and I want to go there. Where is it in Gauteng? Because Gauteng is big. It's quite not school in Southern way in Southern, and I want to go and see for myself. Chair, another issue I think I want to 
not to support the issue of Indela Ibizwa Gabapande. You cannot ask SAFA and this project. It's totally different. And SAFA, the disadvantage, when you check Fan Valley, it's still there. It's a white elephant. There's nothing happening. You ask Valley for money for 2010 and this one. I don't think Indela Ibizwa Gabapande. On that note, Chair, I think the question again of finances, I think they must come back to us with finances and table with key exactly how did it come. Right now on their finances, it's 36 million uh, that it's earmarked a uh, legacy cost. It's 36.1 million. Can they give us details exactly how did they come to that? I think their finances, I think they must come back to us and tell us exactly. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mshonko. Honorable Dennis. Thank you, Chairperson, for the second opportunity. I just want to make a comment. Uh, I, I note the um, run-up to the World Cup, the participation of Africa and African regions. Um, but to deal with this big brother perception, I, I want to suggest that when the minister or the presidency, presidency hosts that event, uh, just prior to the World Cup, that the uh, leadership from Africa or the AU or some senior leadership in the sports also be invited to that event to make Africa leadership also part of, of, of the last phase before the World Cup. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Dennis. Honorable Zondi. Thanks, Chair. We are informed and we, 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 we thank the committee for that. Just one question from the department, who did you directly, Chair? How is the department monitoring the implementation of the commitments made from sister department through the IMC, noting that its last meeting as per the presentation was in September last year. And what is the progress on the resolutions of the first IMC? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Sondi. Honorable Maloman. Thank you, Honorable Chair. My question is to be based to say on the department to say what has the department projected the potential social economic impact of hosting the Netball World Cup? What are the potential impact? And how is the interministerial committee ensuring there is a maximum benefit that ensures that the impact is redistributed beyond the legacy? The other one, it will be how will the NWC 2023 company and the board ensure that World Cup fan parks and World Cup incorporates local businesses to create economic opportunity for the youth, women, and people with disability. And what are the, its targets? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Malumani. Uh, can, can, can I give uh, everyone within five minutes, you must finish answering, starting with uh, the leader of the board, the patients, till to the um, DG. Uh, your five minutes is even too much, but of course we want uh, answers. Let me give it to you. <laughs> I, I think uh, it will be it will be unfair yes. for for the for this chairperson to respond on the age of conflict of interest. I um, maybe I must just say that um, um, the when uh, that time arrives and there is a such an issue, there are various measures to deal with conflict of interest, such as recusal and having independent members dealing with any matter that might arise if it has to be involving the board and SASCOC has to, to then attend to the matter. So it will be addressed independently and fairly. And I hope uh, that also in the most transparent and accountable manner, uh, should such a matter uh, arise. Uh, I would like to assure the members of that as a development will also then working with the SASCOC ensure that that and it does not compromise the integrity of this project, and whether post it or during the project itself, as we host the the World Cup. Chairperson, I think Babu Mshongo, Mshongo, when a mistake is your to pass a message, who simply gave a full address. Oyogutigu yewagupi, uma uti uyagule skole, 
was was what I'm saying. One nigga and she street address. A bomb song of Chambege, a Gazwang at that time, but the address was given. And then um, the structure that has been requested, as well as uh, the budget breakdown, as we had said, we will submit and think I'm sure we will honor uh, that. As uh, the chair also indicated, that we then submit such a breakdown so that everybody knows. Uh, because Honorable Dennis had raised also detailed questions around the issue of the budget. And then Honorable Nomane uh, on the issue of monitoring, oh sorry, Honorable Zondi, monitoring and working with other departments. We indicated earlier that uh, first and foremost, we've got a, a Director's General a Technical IMC, uh, in which then we meet and the progress is reported, and, and also reports will be submitted in those meetings. Uh, as we then look at the progress made by each department uh, on their commitments. And, and that is what we do. That is why we ask them to put it in writing and we will use that then as a dashboard to monitor progress um, as, as we meet them uh, in these meetings or as when we ask them to submit reports uh, to the team in the department. Uh, and that is why the members of the team are also here who then follow up with those departments at uh, the time. Then on the issue raised around um, uh, socioeconomic impact, uh, one of the areas why these other departments are involved, like the Department of Forest, Fishery and Environment, and what their commitments are, uh, we, uh, they are focusing exactly on some of those areas uh, like uh, when we talk of pollution and what the impact is both on health and as well as the hosting of that event, the cleanliness, uh, what happens there, we will be working with them uh, as Department of Forest, Fisher and Environment, but also with GTIC uh, that uh, looks at it also trade uh, and the economic impact uh, that is, is going to accrue. Uh, but there are projections on what we believe would be the return on investment in this regard uh, and we believe that it, just through tourism alone uh, there will be a huge uh, return on investment uh, in, in the particularly in the city of Cape Town and then broadly in the in the Western Key as well as then uh, unfortunately as explained that uh, this is very limited in terms of hosting but we are working with the provinces to look at how else the other provinces can benefit economically, but the greater injection would be, of course, where this event is being hosted, which would be in, in the Western Cape. The issue of local business, we have emphasized as a department this issue, particularly to the board, uh, that as we deal with procurement issues, as we deal with assignment of um, services to be delivered, uh, that we never lose sight around the issue of vulnerable groups in particular as government priority, but also in terms of spreading the cake so that it is not only a particular section of the community that benefits uh, in the city of Cape Town, but that we monitor that uh, whatever they do, they must make sure that uh, the local businesses are benefiting uh, chairperson. So I think the board is, is, is aware of that, but also that when we look at the reports, even at the level of the IMC, when we report on these things, we will be paying a, a hawk's eye attention on the issue of local economy, but also the spreading of benefits to all the communities of Western Cape. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, DG. Uh, honorable members. Can, can, can I just, through you, Chair, just to... Yes. Yeah, thank you. I, I just want to 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 respond and 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 maybe say call a honourable Mshongo, Motis uh, the, the 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 issue of the ticketing uh, it was based on projections from the pre previous World um, World Cup which was held in in the UK and so that's why we came up with that kind of of a uh, projection, but also just to confirm, uh, Madam Chairperson, that uh, we will uh, submit the the structure and also the whole finance as, as requested to the portfolio committee. And thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, thank you, uh, patience. 
che na meng ka lutlolo deng a zwa mbuting sa meng game sa king seng zwe msa king ka lutlolo la thank you zwa ba na u ngme thank you honorable mshongo eh seng khatele manje honorable mshongo na we comrade in case seng vele ni khulu manje in that note honorable members can i take this opportunity to thank a the department and the board world cup board led by izimbo odo we are thinking that as time goes on we again call you uh, to uh, update us uh, this is very good this is history in South Africa to have a world world cup of the netball yeah. really we do appreciate we do appreciate what um um the colleagues of the western cape that they are doing uh, i'll ask them sometimes they must involve this committee in whatever they are thinking that they want this committee to see is just to write to chapters and saying that on such such a day we are going uh, to Poland or going to west coast uh, to do uh, abc in order that sometimes as this committee we must uh, have an oversight uh, that we must be on the ground uh, will 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 uh, invite that to your board and then even to your department i'm suspecting we want to own this uh, project and this project we want to own that this world cup is coming to south africa and is coming away we uh, employed our our government uh, our head office so we will appreciate that in those words uh, i can release the, the leadership of the world cup but the department of uh, some of the ttgs maybe they will remain behind going to the last point of the agenda thank you so much we appreciate uh, your your good work and uh, as we are asking questions we want to be informed because uh, we are the eyes and people of south africa when it comes to sport so we must have a first hand information you are released thank you very much honorable chairperson and thank you very much to all the members of the portfolio committee thank you thank you thank good you. morning thank you thank you so much and thank you Jane. thank you thank you so much president uh, now uh, dg uh, you know there's a there's a there's a item in in our language it patamisa njengomgqakwe usidla ilifa so ndithunjalo ke ngokuba Kabelis Ali, thank you. And now I'm giving uh, the DG to take us through in this MOU. Thank you, DG. Honorable Chairperson, thank you very much. And this is our Mesa to make sure we're going to see Slonipi's card. Chairperson, there are two MOUs that we are to table. Uh, uh, to the portfolio committee, and that is uh, the one with uh, the Lesotho, as well as the one with uh, uh, Palestine. And the uh, chairperson, um, indeed, the presentations are, are extremely brief, but we just want to first highlight that this is a response to our country's readmission uh, after 1994 uh, to, the, to be part of the family of nations. And in doing so, the relationships then are regulated through various um, instruments, 
And one of the key instruments is the issue of bilateral agreements, which then are translated into MOUs for us to be able to work with. And these MOUs then are tabled for ratification by parliament. And we did submit this uh, to parliament for them to be ratified. And they are therefore then officially binding uh, between the two states. And that is uh, South Africa and Palestine, as well as South Africa and um, Lesotho. Uh, Chairperson, we made the presentation um, uh, to be quite uh, short and focused because we believe that uh, we did attach in the submission of the presentations uh, together with them, the actual um, MOUs themselves. And therefore the areas of cooperation are outlined and detailed in the MOUs. We are just presenting here the current status on where we are uh, with these uh, uh, MOUs or with the, our partnership with these countries. Mm -hmm. uh, but if need be, we can always refer to the articles uh, which uh, regulate the relationship and the areas of cooperation as outlined in that MOU. I will then, uh, Chairperson, request that uh, uh, DDG can just, just cross through with the Lesotho one uh, as well as uh, simultaneously move to cover the one in relation to, to, to Palestine. Uh, over uh, to uh, DDG Khan. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, DG, and good afternoon, or good morning again, uh, Chairperson and uh, members of the committee, uh, DG and colleagues. Um, Chairperson, if we look at the agreement that was signed with uh, Lesotho, the agreement was signed on the 30th of December 2020. It was signed in Maseru Lesotho and it is entered into force upon notification in writing by each party, meaning that the moment each party signs the agreement, it becomes effective. And looking at the validity period and the date of the termination of the, of the MOU, Madam Chair, it's, um, this MOU will remain in force for a period of five years and shall automatically be renewed for a further five years unless both parties indicate that they want it to be terminated. And the date of terminated is, the date of termination is subject to three months written notification through the diplomatic channels, meaning that three months before the agreement is scheduled to expire, each party can give notice uh, of termination through their uh, embassies. Uh, the impact of the South Africa Lesotho Sports Agreement the agreement aims to strengthen bilateral sports relations. South Africa and Lesotho are both active members of the African Union Sports Council Region 5, which is your Southern African region made up of 10 um, countries. And thus the agreement contributes significantly to sports development in the SADC region. Uh, the status of the South Africa Lesotho Sports Agreement Madam Chair, the agreement is active and the two parties still need to develop a program of cooperation for the implementation of the agreement. Um, Madam Chair, at present, because of the fact that we participate in uh, the AUSC Region 5 uh, Sports Council, there is collaboration where the two countries do meet at the various uh, meetings that I held, executive meetings, as well as the Council of Ministers meetings. And hence, you know, uh, we are still going to finalize those areas that are of importance to us in also ensuring that we fulfill the obligations to the AU Region 5 and also the A Sports Council and also the AU uh, Sports Commission as well. So that is work in progress, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, DG. Should we go on with the Palestine as well, DG? Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Can we move the next slide? Okay. Again, um, Madam Chair, this is the agreement with Palestine between the government of the Republic of South Africa and the government of state of Palestine, again, in the cooperation in the field of youth and sport. Uh, okay, 
This agreement was signed in December 2018. Uh, it was signed diplomatically through the embassies and not going to the countries themselves. Uh, and again, the um, uh, entry into force, it's entered into force upon the date of signature, meaning that when the, when the agreements are signed, then it becomes effective. Okay. Uh, validity period and date of termination, again, Madam Chair, it's for a period of five years and shall automatically be renewed for successive periods of three years until terminated. And it is again subject to three months written notice before we, we want to terminate this agreement. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, the importance and the impact of the South Africa-Palestine sports agreement the agree agreement to, aims to promote and strengthen bilateral sports relations, relations and to support the Palestinian struggle against Israeli occupation through the exchange of sports programs. Mm -hmm. And I think this, Madam Chair, then contributes to our own, makes a contribution to our own efforts towards sports for peace and development. Um, the implementation of, of the agreement is in progress. The minister met with the uh, ambassador to Palestine last year in February sometime. So the agreement is in progress through the handover of sports equipment and the free Palestine football program in Cape Town and in Johannesburg in support of the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people from 2020 to 2022. So that's, that's the efforts, that's how the program was implemented for now. Um, through these solidarity with Palestine and also for through the sports for peace and development. Um, what is still outstanding, Madam Chair, is to develop and sign a program of cooperation with Palestine. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. That's the end of those two presentations. Thanks, TJ. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Chairperson, and uh, uh, thanks, TJ. Uh, just chairperson to indicate that if uh, honorable members um, uh, seek the detail uh, of the areas of cooperation, uh, both in terms of development and high performance levels in sport, um, then the members uh, in the document we submitted that talks to Article 3 um, under the Lesotho, as well as same thing uh, on the agreement with the, um, uh, Palestine. Article 3 uh, defines critical areas uh, that we believe we should be able to uh, have those exchanges. Uh, among others, of course, would be uh, the issues of school sport programs, uh, the issues of academies, the issues of anti-doping, uh, that we should be able to work in the cross-border and recreation programs. All these are covered, Chairperson, uh, in Article 3. And then Article 4 talks to the exchange programs uh, that we can have uh, between ourselves uh, and as areas of cooperation that we seek to have as we advance uh, South Africa's commitment in terms of priority seven of a better Africa and a better world and how we can then be able to work together through collaborative efforts uh, between our countries, Lesotho, as well as Palestine. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh... No honorable members. Hey, they always jump the gun before even I'm saying. Uh, I cannot say withdraw now your hands, but already whilst people are on the uh, on the platform, I don't think it's 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 right and good to raise your hand because sometimes I'm thinking that you want to object what the, the, the somebody is saying. But I know that everyone is rushing for the time, but I can give everyone uh, that must say something. I don't think it's uh, respectful also while somebody is on the platform and you raise the hand. You know, these hands uh, are very um, intimidating. Sometimes I won't even know whether you want to say order chairperson because we don't call order by just shouting, you call order by raising hand. So I'm suspecting that's the only problem that 
I'm always not one that you must raise. And before I say, now this is the time, because hands are saying a lot of things. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, leadership of the department. I've seen the hand of Honorable Denise. I'm calling hands Honorable uh, Veronica. Uh, so uh, Honorable Mklongo, Honorable Malomane. Thank you in, in that order, Honorable Members. <laughs> Uh, thank you, um, Chairperson. My apologies for putting my hand up earlier <laughs> than the normal time, <laughs> Chairperson. <laughs> um, Chairperson, I just want to have a question. Um, I I want to know if this agreement is subject to um, to approval by by Durko and others. How do we work with the uh, international relations before we um, before the department sign sign the agreement, and then. Um, I know there is a in, in one of the slides there is a strong political line in terms of government's position towards Palestine and Israel. Um, <clears throat> so I I I I just wanted to know if that statement would also affect um, our relationship with other countries. You know, how does that work if if we're in a global um, space? How does that work with particularly with Israel's stance? On, on the position the government is taking. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Member. Honorable uh, Veronica. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, I want to know if uh, the department can, um, if we can receive these agreements, because we, uh, the, it's not a lot that we, information that we receive, and we would like to know the details. Um, and I don't, I think we should even ask for this. I'm not sure why we didn't, was not presented with it. That's my first question. And then um, I also want to know what are the cost implications for South Africa over the terms of these agreements? Um, how much do we invest per year in these countries? And how does South Africa benefit from these agreements? Are they, um, if we can get that detail. And then I also want to concur with uh, Honorable um, Joseph. Um, I find it a bit disturbing that there's uh, this specific political uh, stand uh, from the from the uh, in 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 our documents. Uh, is sport not supposed to be apolitical? Um, and then also the government cannot speak on behalf of all of us, and specifically with in in this um, we we speak of school sport and uh, clubs, etc. It I find it um, it it's a uh, um, how can I put it? It's alarming that we bring in politics into sport. It should not be like that. So I would just want to raise my concern about that too. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Veronica. Honorable Mishong. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I'll, I'll be onboarding now. I apologize if there's a noise behind me. But nonetheless, Chair, I wanted to find out, are we going to have the same MOU with other countries like Israel, Ukraine, and others. I wanted to find out that then. Can we get the detail of the presentation? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mishlong. Honorable Stondi. I'll be losing you. Can I say no to my apology? Apology, Chair. Okay. I'm going to accept. Accepted. Thank you. Yes. Honorable Stondi. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, my question is on Palestine in particular, noting that the memorandum of understanding with the government of the state of Palestine, of Palestine took effect in December 2018. What is the hindrance, hindrance to developing a program of cooperation and does the department have the capacity to plan, implement, and we are, we are very soft. Uh, come nearer to 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 your mic or increase the volume. Honorable okay, member. Chair. Okay, okay. Um, chair, I was saying, noting the memorandum of understanding with the government of the state of Palestine took effect in December 2018. What is the hindrance to developing a program of cooperation? And does the department have the capacity to plan, 
implement and monitor international cooperation. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Malomani. Thank you, Chair. Mine, it will be based on the MOU between Kingdom of Lesotho. It's understanding that a, that a basis of memorandum of understanding is informed by particular outcomes. What are the specific intended outcome of the agreement? And when will the department develop a program of cooperation for implementation, noting that the agreement was signed in 2020? Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, mine is, is just to check uh, this presentation. Does it mean that uh, um, these agreements have been uh, domesticated? Uh, I know that you sign and domesticate it. Uh, I want to get that. And also, uh, I know that there's a there's there's this uh, department international relations but what is our role as as the committee uh, in these mous of these countries in whatever country let alone that today we're talking about these two countries what, what is our role uh, as as a committee of parliament thank you We are left with a, a minutes that we can uh, round up and we can do a follow ups if we are just uh, have short uh, questions that are spot on. Uh, DJ? Um, uh, DJ? Um... Do you want to take any and Mishak? And uh, there's a question on the process, uh, and then I will just uh, try to conclude. Um, uh, Honorable Chairman, if it's agreeable. Um, th yeah, thank you very much, DG. DG, if I may just um, try to respond to Honorable Malumani's um, question around, you know, what 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 is the benefit to both the parties? I think if I have to focus, and her focus was on Lesotho, if I can speak about Lesotho uh, Chepasen, um, there was an exchange of skills. You know, South Africa in 2013, we assisted, we worked with Lesotho to assist them to host the Kusafa Cup. So together with Safa and the skills that we have in coach development, et cetera, and the hosting of major events. Our, host, our major events and our international relations team actually went to Lesotho to support uh, Lesotho in, uh, in staging the Kusafa Cup. And the exchange for us, Chepas, and the benefits also for, for ourselves was the fact that Lesotho has a, it's a high altitude country. If you look at our athletes, they go all over the country. They all go all over the world looking for high altitude venues to train uh, in preparation for major championships. So Lesotho, that was the endeavors from our side to actually work with, Limpo, with Lesotho for our high performance athletes to have a venue just across the border so that they can then train uh, in a high altitude climate. Already, uh, chairperson. So, so that that is that is the. DG, 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 mute DG. DG, please yes. Go on, DG. Thanks. So that that is the the ones that we already had started uh, in 2013 to work with them. But going forward now, Madam Chair, I think we've indicated that we're going to look at, you know, the uh, memorandum of cooperation that, I mean, the cooperation agreement that we, implementation agreement that we must finalize and, and see how we implement it. Obviously, Madam Chair, you know, when you sign these agreements, they, whenever you have to get to the country or if they have something to offer, then they would fund it. Uh, by the same token, we had sent our team to Lesotho, and we then had to pay for their accommodation, flight, etc., um, from our side. Thanks, Madam Chair. 
Thank you, TTJ. Um, Meshach, um, there was a question in relation to the process and the involvement of DERCO and the state at state law advisors. Can you just go through that? Thank you, DG. Um, good afternoon, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Um, just to respond uh, to the question raised by uh, uh, Honorable Dennis uh, with regard to the processes. Um, indeed, uh, uh, Honorable Member, um, when we do agreements <clears throat> uh, with any other country, not only with the ones that we have tabled today, we engage the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, the Office of the Chief State Law Advisor, and also we also engage the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development so that we accede to the international laws and the domestic laws that requires within that particular agreement or any, any other agreement uh, that we intend to sign as, as, as the country. So those processes have been followed. After um, engaging those uh, uh, two departments, we also engage our counterparts in terms of the tax itself, because we need to agree, both of us who forgot what is in the tax in terms of the areas of cooperation. Therefore, all those processes have been met until the, where we said, both parties uh, are in agreement with what is in the text, and also the uh, the two departments, as I've indicated, as indicated they've satisfied themselves in terms of uh, the international laws and also the domestic laws with regard to the signing of the agreement. I think um, let me pause there, uh, chair. The processes have been followed uh, until to the signing of the agreement. Thank you very much. No, thanks very much. Hi, um, fine, thanks for the Can you note? Um, the chairperson, uh, firstly, maybe I must uh, just indicate that indeed it is correct that we we, sh we should be sending these agreements to the portfolio committee. And uh, I think um, when I asked you, my team, we just there was an error there that uh, they didn't uh, attach this when we were submitting the presentation, uh, when I checked that uh, I was being told that indeed it's confirmed these things did go, I think I must uh, just uh, um, apologize on that and make sure that uh, just soon after this meeting, uh, I will forward these agreements uh, to the portfolio committee. And um, as soon as we the meeting is over the portfolio committee. Now on the issue of the uh, Palestine uh, and the statement. Uh, Chairperson, our, our submission was just as South Africans are fully aware about the state of Palestinian Israeli situation. Um, it's just a, a standing uh, arrangement that there is a commitment by this government to support the Palestinians and make sure that uh, they are able to also eventually through the solidarity of the of their nations of the world that they acquire their own freedom. And at this stage, the only way to assist them is, is where we can provide them uh, and their children with opportunities to play and do whatever that we can in terms of exchange programs as a nation. Because I think as our government have constantly stated, even in the past, about the solidarity with the Palestinians and support them uh, until they have their own freedom. So uh, that is not uh, us stating a political statement because we know that we are not politicians. We are just stating in terms of what government stands for at this stage on the issue of the side of the oppressed uh, and the exploited in Palestine. And that is what we were stating, Chairperson, at this stage in this particular paragraph. We are not delving into any politics, and we understand that we should not mix political sport. Unfortunately, what's happening in the world currently is exactly that way. In some countries where there is conflict, sport is affected, uh, but it's not our area. Uh, we fully uh, accept the church person. Then on the issue um, as administrators, and then on the issue of um, the financials, uh, all the cooperation agreements uh, that we have 
they will be able to clarify the role. For instance, if you look at what it says with uh, Lesotho, is that uh, every every country will be in Article uh, 4, I think, uh, talks to the financials, uh, that uh, we will then, uh, each government is responsible for its own um, funding. Uh, I think it's Article 5. Uh, in this regard, Chairperson, uh, that expenses incurred in the implementation of this MOU uh, shall be borne equally by the parties who have signed. So um, it, it depends at a time and what type of intervention, um, but all the time uh, we guard against them um, um, being the ones who, as a government, uh, just be the ones who borne the financial implications. Uh, if it is a mutual agreement, then each party has to play and make its contribution towards achieving a particular outcome that is envisaged in the MOA. And then, uh, Chairperson, I think, um, uh, I don't know, did you, did you speak to the issue of the COP with um, Palestine and what is an obstacle there, if there is any at all, or just a delay? A charity? Mishak, do you want to talk to that? Yes, yes I, I, I want to talk to that, DG. DG. <clears throat> thank you, DG, and thank you to um, uh, Honorable Chair. With regard to um, the question that was raised by Honor, Honorable Zondo uh, regarding the hindrance, whether there's hindrance in terms of developing a program of cooperation, there's no hindrance, uh, Honorable Member. Um, you, we also have a concern as South Africa um, and I'm not so sure on their part because after signing an agreement, it's not a question of only signing the agreement and put it on the shelf, but uh, there's an implementation plan that comes in. But in most instances, the challenge that we encounter um, is that uh, uh, you know some countries, or particularly this one, uh, the Palestine or, or, or Lesotho, they will uh, uh, sign agreements, and then after that, we don't have to. Uh, we need to chase them in terms of trying to uh, develop an implementation plan. But it's, it's something that is ongoing, it's in the process. Uh, we're dealing with that. There's capacity in the department to deal with that and make it a point that uh, when, when, when we sign, whether it's no disagreement, as I've indicated, uh, any other agreements, we need to uh, uh, chase them and make it a point because it has to be agreed between the two countries. It's not only us that has to develop and then we leave it there. We need to develop the problem of cooperation and send it to them so that we are in, 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 we are in a, a consensus with regard to what is in the program of, of cooperation. So it's, it's a process now that we are working on it. Uh, it will be finalized soon, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much. Chairperson, uh, um, we, we sign agreement with countries uh, like Ukraine, Israel, of course, uh, Chairperson, there hasn't been any instruction to exclude any country where South Africa stands to benefit in the field of sport or arts. And we, we, we do engage or enter into agreements. And if there is mutual agreement and understanding of what are those areas of cooperation and the nature of the relationship that we, we, we're going to have. So we are not bad uh, at this stage to say, you may not enter within the, an agreement with this particular country. So it just depends on the state of readiness between the two countries to be able to enter into such an agreement. And then um, I think Chairperson, uh, the issue of uh, monitor the implementation and, and be able to make sure that we yield to the results. Of course, while we cannot impose uh, on the other countries to be forced to cooperate once they have signed. But in my understanding and the, what we do, we have to work together with those countries, of course, with mutual respect of one another to ensure that um, when we initiate programs to put into effect the agreements, uh, that the other uh, country then uh, cooperates and participate. So that is how we, we, we deal with the implementation of this and then um, make sure that the objects and the intentions of the agreement are, are, are then uh, met, uh, Chairperson, uh, because we also have to now uh, report on these issues of 
MOUs uh, through uh, what we call the forum of the directors general, uh, because there has been a concern that sometimes we enter into agreements and then they lie uh, follow and nobody follows up or get them implemented. So I think it is a duty also of a, myself as an accounting officer that once these agreements are entered into, we then make sure that uh, we implement them uh, as a department. Chairperson, I believe that uh, we have uh, answered the questions. Uh, if there is any uh, that we might have missed, um, we will then be willing to respond. But I think the one on domestication, uh, the answer, uh, Chairperson, Honorable Chair, uh, lies with the response by Meshach in terms of the process uh, that these um, agreements, uh, before they are finalized, there is that engagement and a look at whether they advance the national interest of South Africa um, um, uh, through sports, uh, if it is our sport, if it is arts and culture, and uh, when we also do that. So by the time they are signed off, then they are aligned with the South African laws, um, also, of, and as well as the laws of that other country to make cooperation possible. Uh, it is different when you're dealing with then the multilateral uh, agreements, uh, okay. which then require domestication. Yes, Chairperson. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, honorable members, uh, we are on time. Uh, thank you so much, DG. And I'm suspecting, uh, honorable members, they did ask some information that uh, they must be given. I'm also wanting to, to, to share that, that I'm also thinking that as UDDG uh, was saying that uh, the, with, with Lesotho, that when the, the, the Kosafa Cup uh, did uh, give them some experience. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm suspecting uh, in the question of skills. If we can get that information in order that we must know what is going on uh, and why now we're having these MOUs and the experience that really uh, we are copy as this uh, government but also, I do. Uh, I'm happy about it. Um, the 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 questions that uh, are responded to because I was wondering that treaties and MOUs are done uh, because uh, we are also a member of state uh, which uh, have got a right to do what we're discussing today, uh, maybe really we, 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 we need to, to present the entire process of uh, having the MOUs with other countries and uh, present the, <clears throat> the copies uh, where we sign, where the articles are explaining why as a South African government, we took a decision to be part of those MOUs. It's so important in order that uh, when uh, we ask those questions, we ask them because you did give us full information for an understanding. Um, honorable members, uh, DG, you are released. Thank you so much. Uh, with your team that you always providing uh, us with answers. Did you? Chairperson, we would like uh, to thank you uh, see, and thank the, the honorable members of the portfolio committee for insightful questions and we really take comfort also uh, on the criti criticism where we get a constructive criticism and guidance. Um, and uh, also the key messages uh, uh, that were given to us where they give us a sense of support 
uh, so that we can continue to do better to save our people. I think, uh, Chairperson, you had raised the issue on the role of the a committee. I think it is exactly what you are doing even now uh, to make sure that you get the report, you play the oversight on whether these agreements are, are advancing the interest of South Africa and holding us to account and report on whether those agreements are being then implemented. Uh, it's exactly that role uh, that is expected, uh, which we really appreciate. It's the first time we present something like this, and I'm sure when we come back with the others, we will also have improved on that. Thank you very much, Chairperson, um, for the opportunity. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much. Honorable members, with, uh, we left with six minutes. Can, can we um, agree to that the minutes must be flighted? I don't want to postpone the the office is saying that let's not do in minutes. It's one set of minutes and we read the minutes. Can so put the minutes? Excuse me, Madam Chair. Yes, so. There was a mistake with the minutes of the 27th. We were supposed to start with them, but they were not sent to members. Oh, and the ones okay. that were sent to members were of the 31st of May. Yes. Okay. So I'm not sure whether we should continue with the ones of the 31st, Madam Chair, and then do the 27th next week. Yes. Uh, we must uh, fly to those whom, which we read. And then next week, you will uh, present those who you didn't give to us. Still a few minutes. Honorable members, uh, these minutes were sent to us, the minutes of the 31st of May. Uh, can, can I uh, yes. go up? A very important thing is that also members must check whether the, the, their names are written, but the, the conduct of the minutes, everyone's supposed to come here, read the minutes. So, honorable members, these minutes were circulated uh, to all of us now are presented in front of us. Uh, let me take this opportunity to say that uh, can any member uh, propose for adoption of the minutes? Honorable okay. Malomani. Thank you, Chair. I move for the adoption of the 31st minutes as presented. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Malomana, Honorable Sebia. Thanks, Chairperson. I'm seconding the adoption of the 31st minutes. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Members. If there's nothing that it's within our agenda. I'm, I'm taking this uh, opportunity to close this meeting officially. Thank you so Sorry. much. Sorry, Chair. Before you yes. close. Yes. Yes. On yes. This thing of, uh, of Honorable Nklonga is not right. He was delaying our meetings. Now he has gone. He left us behind. Okay, we are noting his apology. 
But this thing of delaying the meetings and left us behind I is not acceptable. His behavior is not acceptable. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable uh, Veronica. Honorable Veronica. Uh, I'm calling Honorable Veronica, but uh, she's not uh, speaking. By that note, Honorable Members, uh, this meeting is officially closed. Please go to the bus. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank, Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you to everyone. Bye.